Thanks, Katie. Beautiful day in Blacksburg here at Lane Stadium. Justin Fuentes, Hokies, riding high after a dominant performance a week ago. Today they square off with the Pirates of East Carolina. Who's feeling invincible today? When it's at its toughest, the greatest ones step up. The success of this team depends on me. You hang in there, you fight, you scratch, you claw, and you find a way to win. The tougher it gets, what? The better we freaking play. in all of college football as the Hokies take the field at Lane Stadium. We welcome you to homecoming in Blacksburg. It's the ACC Network Game of the Week presented by Mellow Mushroom. Our matchup today, the 21st all-time meeting between the East Carolina Pirates and the Virginia Tech Hokies. It is so great to have you with us for our game this afternoon. Tom Wormy along with Dave Archer. Roddy Jones will join us in just a moment. The starting quarterback for the Hokies is Gerard Evans. What a performance last week in a shutout win against Boston College. He tied a school record with five TD passes. Well, I think head coach Justin Fuente knew he had a talented player on the field. I think the thing that pleases him the most is the poise he's shown in the first three games. Now, throwing the football was never going to be a problem. He distributed to, to three different receivers for five touchdowns, as you talked about, Tom. It equal a school record for 2002 in Brian Randall. But it's his ability to command the offense and get people involved is what they're so excited about here in Blacksburg. Gerard Evans, what a performance. 10 TD passes leading the ACC this season. Now, Virginia Tech has lost the last two meetings against East Carolina. And the Pirates come to the stadium today with a very talented receiver in Zay Jones. 22 receptions last week against South Carolina. Yeah, it's mind-boggling. 22 receptions against South Carolina a week ago. That's a career for some guys, a season for some guys, but not for this guy. His last five times he stepped on the field for East Carolina, he's averaged 13 catches and 150 yards. Big time player. Now he's got the leading passer from a completion percentage standpoint in the country. Philip Nelson, Nelson driving the football. And he's not the only receiver going to catch some balls. we got a big timer for Virginia Tech, Roddy, going to catch it for them. You're exactly right, Arch. Number one, Isaiah Ford for the Virginia Tech Hokies, already one of the most prolific receivers in the history of Virginia Tech. He's the only receiver to have 1,000 yards receiving in a season. He's the only receiver to have 10 touchdowns or more in a season. And he's not the only one that they have. Cam Phillips, the guy in the slot and six foot seven, tight end or receiver Bucky Hodges is out there as well. How would you have liked to have that cast of characters, Arch? I would have loved it, Roddy. There's playmakers all over the field for both these offenses. Expect it to be high octane today. Just moments away from the start of this game. East Carolina and Virginia Tech. Greg Stroman will be the deep man as he will accept the kick from Caleb Pratt for the Pirates, who, as you have heard, have won six in a row against the ACC. Stroman, who today is wearing number 25, will stay in the end zone for the touchback. ACC football brought to you in HD by your local Tire Pros dealer. Win a VIP trip for two to the ACC championship game and Continental Tires at TireProsSweepstakes.com. As you saw, ECU won the toss and elected to defer to the second half. A big physical quarterback. We just talked about him in the opening. Gerard Evans, 6'3", 235 pounds. Completion percentage outstanding. How about the touchdown to interception ratio? Amazing. Coming off a record performance a week ago against BC. Virginia Tech 2 and 1 on the season 2 and 0 here at Lane Stadium with a 49 nothing win against Boston College their first shutout in about four years for Bud Foster's defense. 
Time for the impact players brought to you by Food Lion. We start with Virginia Tech, Dave. Well, Jonathan McLaughlin will start up, start up front. 39 career starts. Big fellow was left tackle last year. Last year slid to right tackle. Bucky Hodges, matchup nightmare. He's a guy closing in on some big time records here at Virginia Tech in his own right. It'll be second and eight for Virginia Tech. That win against BC, Dave, by the way, tied the largest margin of victory in an ACC game. You have to go back to 04. They beat Maryland 55 to 6. Evans, he'll take off. And up close to the 35 yard line for the run, Gerard Evans, the junior from Dallas, Texas. Again, he wants to be a featured part of the run game. This is just a fake to the outside. There's not enough people in the box for ECU to stop the quarterback run game. But you can see how quickly ECU can close. Scotty Montgomery's team can run on defense. It's going to be third and short for Virginia Tech. Marshawn Williams in the game for the Hokies. Ran for 81 yards last week in his first appearance of the season after that knee injury abbreviated his season a year ago. Evans decides to keep it and the Pirates swallow him up on third down. Dimashe Bailey leading the way and the Hokies lose three. Well, watch the freshman number 44 for Trell. He's going to play in between. Number 44 makes Evans hold the football long enough where a number of Pirates are able to rally the football. Bailey, the guy that will get credit for the tackle, but number 44 for Trell made an outstanding play, the true freshman. Mitchell Ludwig will punt. Quay Johnson will wait for it. Ludwig able to handle that snap. Johnson wants the fair catch. Backtracking at the 18, and he makes it successfully. 49-yard punt for Ludwig. Time to look at the East Carolina impact players. Dave, it's brought to you by Food Line. Not a lot of experience up front, but what there is is JT Boyd. He's a senior. He's played a lot of football, 27 career starts. He's a guy on a lot of the watch lists, lists for offensive linemen. And Anthony Scott, there's a lot of playmakers on this football team. This kid's got great speed, 6.5 yards of rush. He has laid the ball on the ground. That is a concern for Coach Montgomery. Philip Nelson, the senior from DeForest, Wisconsin, wants to throw on first down. Incomplete up near the 50, looking for Jimmy Williams. Brandon Faison was back there defensively for Virginia Tech, number 31. There is a flag, a penalty marker on the play. Offense number 77, five yard penalty, first down. Big left guard Will Dancy got a little too far downfield. Something the officials are looking very closely at when those offensive linemen get a little bit too far downfield. An outstanding throw right out of the box. Dancy downfield, but a beautiful throw by Philip Nelson down the sideline. Tight coverage by Faison. Number 11, James Summers, is in the game. Nelson fakes to him and then hits Zay Jones and he gets up there to 20. Now James Summers, number 11, Dave, is technically the backup quarterback for these Pirates. Well, he's the backup quarterback when you start talking about the, the Wildcat run game. I'm not sure they necessarily want him in throwing the ball vertically down the field, but he's a gifted player. He had 169 yards rushing in this game a year ago for two touchdowns. He really broke Virginia Tech's back running the football. And on this third down play, Summers will be the quarterback as Nelson has come out of the game. Check it second down for ECU. Summers takes off, tries to go up the middle. He is met there by Tremaine Edmonds and Andrew Motuapuaka on the stop for the Hokies. Just a two-yard game. Now, this is something Virginia Tech is very aware of. When Summers is in the game, they want to run physically straight ahead. And Virginia Tech's going to gang up against the run, so... If Scotty Montgomery's willing to let Summers throw it, I think there's going to be some opportunities one on one on the back end. But Bud Foster, his defense knows that when a number 11 steps in the game, especially going to take the snap, they're looking for the run game. So Philip Nelson has come back into the game. Summers is in there also.
Nelson has to escape. A crumbling pocket goes up to the 25, and he is dropped. Tremaine Edmonds, Anthony Chicago combining on the stop at three yards for ECU. And just zone coverage by Virginia Tech, and really an opportunity for Nelson to get rid of the football, but excellent pressure to the inside that time by Mahota. Forced Nelson off his spot, and they're going to have to punt the football. Worth Gregory has to come in. Wearing number 25 today is Greg Stroman. That is in honor of former coach Frank Beamer, the legend, who is in attendance today. We'll get into more of that. How they are honoring and linking the present to the past. Strowman. 25. Weaving his way up the middle of the field. Strowman continues. Strowman to the 20. Got a block. And Strowman is in the end zone. Touchdown, Hokies. Number 25, Frank Beamer's number. Beamer ball back here in Blacksburg. There's a special teams touchdown on a punt return, and it's just a weaving effort by one of the fastest players wearing a hokey helmet. Found a beautiful crease and downfield blocking, but really was about Strowman and the great speed to put it in the end zone. Dave, he went 87 yards for the score. Joey Sly adds the extra point, and Virginia Tech strikes first. Greg Stroman breaking away and going the distance. 7-0 Hokies against the Pirates. ACC football is brought to you by Mellow Mushroom, a higher order of pizza. By your local Toyota dealers, Toyota, let's go places. By Progressive Insurance. By Coke. And by Tire Pros. Homecoming here in Blacksburg, and the first one for Justin Fuente as the first year head coach. And this game could not have started any better for Coach Fuente and the Hokies. Stroman with the third longest return in school history. Dave, the punt was 62 yards. He brought it back 87 yards for the 56th special teams touchdown in the last 30 years for Virginia Tech. Yeah, and it hadn't been very long since Stroman took one back. Remember last year in the bowl game against Tulsa, Stroman took one back 70 or 67 yards for a touchdown. Uh, when you take a look at the punt coverage, and you heard Tom talk about it's a 62-yard punt, this is the definition of outkicking your coverage. When Strowman catches the football, he's got so much room to sort out how the coverage unit's coming down the field that he finds a crease, got a couple of blocks, but nothing that would just knock you dead. It was just his great speed and vision to find the crease. And 80-some-odd 80, 80 yards, what, 87 plays yards later, he's in the end zone. Dave, he did it in that bowl game, as you mentioned. That was a win against Tulsa, 55 to 52. Went 67 yards, as you said, on that occasion. And he follows it up this season with the return. Third longest in school history. Nelson to the boundary. Maybe five yards. Zay Jones makes the catch. There were the Virginia Tech impact players on defense. Brought to you by Food Line. Well, canham has got to be big up front. This is a team that wants to throw the ball. Canham going to have to pressure the passer. We already see some pressure already. Andrew Motuapawaka, he's the eraser. He's the guy that's going to make plays against the run game sideline to sideline. And Chuck Clark in the back end. He's the leader of the secondary. He's played a lot of football for Virginia Tech. Nelson again. Jones again trying to gain the marker very close to it may have just it off as he they got five yards on that play. But this is what they'll do to you Tom they'll nibble at you see three receivers to the outside blocking for Zay Jones 22 receptions a week ago there were a number of them that were like this but good blocking on the perimeter to extend the drive move the chains. Summers back in to the left of Philip Nelson. On first down, trying to go deep. It is incomplete. 
Looking for Jimmy Williams. Adonis Alexander was back there, Dave. Tom, this is the second time that Nelson has made a really good throw on the fade route, and it was on the hands of Jimmy Williams both times. Two big-time throws by the quarterback for ECU, and no play made for him on the other end. Second down for their own 35 for East Carolina. Two and one so far on the season. Little miscommunication there at the sideline as Jones continued to run the pattern, and the ball was well behind him from Philip Nelson. A lot of combination routes for Scotty Montgomery's team. They've got four receivers. Zay Jones is the guy that will play everywhere. He'll play outside, inside, on both sides. Look at East Carolina. Number three in the AAC on third down at almost 50%. That's pretty good. Third and long for the Pirates. Nelson gets away. Got beyond the 40-yard line, but well short of the first down marker. Tremaine Edmonds with the tackle. Tom, Five one, of our, yards. one of our food line impact players, Kenny Canham, coming off that left side right over here. Going to come off the edge. Just a speed rush, force Nelson out of the pocket, and, of course, the tech, the, the tech defenders rally up to make the play again. They force the quarterback off his spot on third down, force him to run with the ball, and now they're punting for the second consecutive drive. Worth Gregory to punt. Greg Stroman standing at his 10 yard line. Took the last punt back. 87 yards for a score for the Hokies. Wants to make a fair catch. Drifts beyond the 15 and makes it successfully. 43 yards on that punt. The tailgating on homecoming. Crank up that grill. And crank up some football on the ACC Network. First quarter in Blacksburg. Hokies lead 7-0. Time for our Carolina Four Keys to the game with Dave Archer. Don't go dead in the red zone. This is something that plagued ECU last week. East Carolina could not punch it in. Probably should have won the game against South Carolina a week ago. And ride the wave, 49-0. Played well in all three facets of the game. Can they ride that wave into this week if you're Virginia Tech? Devins on courts it near side. Ford trying to run under it midfield. And he cannot get there. Boy, he had him. Both quarterbacks have had shots deep. For Nelson, the ball just hasn't been caught. That one, Evans overthrew Ford, who was streaking down the near sideline. Well, these secondaries are going to be tested because they all want to, they both want to get up and help with the run game. But if you do, there's su such great weapons on both sides of the ball. you got to be careful. Evans. So slashing Ford making the catch. Now Ford had four catches, 91 yards, two touchdowns a week ago. Just kept the kept beating the drum. This is a guy you can throw the ball to, going to make the contested catch over his head. It's a quick run from the Hokies. You mentioned Isaiah Ford, Dave. 20 career touchdown grabs. Needs three for the Virginia Tech record. As the junior from Jacksonville, Florida, continues to pile up the numbers. Yeah, eight catches in this game a year ago, Tom, and it looks like ECU's forced a fourth and short here punt. Look so at look. the food line impact players for ECU defensively. McGill up front is a monster in the middle, tough in that 3-4 defense and nose tackle. You got Cam White, the linebacker, kind of the signal caller. He'll call plays there, and then in the secondary, Trevon Simmons, outstanding player as well. Quay Johnson will let it bounce and stop at about the 27-yard line. That is a 47-yard punt by Ludwig. There is a flag on the field. Well behind the play. Jeff McConaughey is our official, and it's going to go against Virginia Tech. So when we come back, Justin Fuente's team on defense, and we'll be back after word from your local ACC station. Tailgating here in Blacksburg on homecoming. It's bowl time at Bojangles. Grab a big bowl box and feed the whole group with Bojangles chicken biscuits, fixings, and tea. Remember, it's always bowl time when you're tailgating, especially at Lane Stadium. Yeah, and I think if you look back in the back, Tom Wormy's back in there somewhere. <laughs> I had to drag him in here to get ready for the game. I had to get a little snack before the kickoff of this game between ECU and Virginia Tech. 
The Pirates have the football. They'll go to the run game. Unsuccessful. James Summers hit immediately. Nigel Williams, number eight. Well, you talk about we we knew if Summers was in the game, Virginia Tech was going to think run. Now that meant Summers at quarterback. Here he's lined up at tailback, but Nigel Williams Williams just destroys the offensive line up front and nails Summers in the backfield. He's a senior from Richmond, Virginia. It's a loss of four on the play. Nelson over the middle. That's complete up near midfield, and the ball comes out. Now the ruling is that it was an incomplete pass. Incomplete. DeAndre Ferrier almost had the grab at midfield. The ball came out, but the pass ruled incomplete. Chuck Clark lowers the boom for Tech. That's what they call him here, Tom. Mr. Boom, and he dropped it right there. Boy, Ferrier catches the ball, both feet down. Does he make that football-esque move? Virginia Tech Hokey faithful feel like he did big hit Chuck Clark now officially third and 13 Anthony Scott has nowhere to go it's gonna force fourth down loss of three Vinnie Mahota well Vinnie Mahota is gonna stop the play play side but what's number 24 Anthony Shegog run through and make the play from the linebacker spot so the DN stopping the flow linebacker running through and this number two defense in the country is getting after the Pirates right now worth Gregory two putt for ECU Stroman waits that is 26. It's going to bounce out of bounds. And that'll be up to the 39 yard line for Virginia Tech. So it's going to be a procedure. And there is a penalty on East Carolina. Our referee, Jeff McConaughey. Should be a tack on, maybe? Procedure on uh, the legal formation, formation. Kicking the five-yard penalty will be added to the end of the game. Let's check in with our Charlotte studio and Katie with them on Florida State and South Florida. Katie, thanks, Tom. Stan Dalvin Cook finally getting going. Some of us like first. I prefer seconds. Dalvin Cook, five carries, 104 yards, two touchdowns. Guys, Florida State up big, 28-14. For now, though, we'll send it back to you, Tom, Dave. Katie, thank you. Dalvin Cook has already gone over 100 yards in that game. 28-14. Florida State with the lead, trying to bounce back after the game against Louisville last week. And Lamar Jackson had another big game, and the Cardinals beat the Knolls. This is Ford trying to swing it wide. Very short game, maybe a yard for Ford. Corey Sargent on the tackle for the Pirates. Really well played by the Pirates. Sargent, number five, makes the tackle at the corner, but they strung the play out all the way along the side to get the leverage on the ball carrier. Nice play by the Pirate defense. Second down at Evans. He gets tripped up and stumbles. Up to the 47 yard line Terrell Richardson made the stop for East Carolina after a two yard game. Yeah, and this is a pirate defense Tom that interchanges their linebackers Richardson comes in listed as a backup on their 2D but really is their number two tackler on the team. So they've got a number of players that play that second level for them. Evans has the time now has to get out of there trying to gain midfield and he won't get there well short of the first down marker. Just a yard for Evans. They just had nobody to throw to, Dan. Boy, excellent job by East Carolina in that back seven. They played zone coverage, took away all the throws, and then were able to get enough pressure to force Evans off his spot, and then were able to tackle him as well. When that front four can force the quarterback off and make the play, pretty good job up front. Ludwig punts. Quay Johnson will stay away from it. I believe that ball hit a Virginia Tech player in the air, so it will be down just beyond the 15 as we check in with Roddy Jones on the sidelines. Tom, you guys have mentioned the fact that Virginia Tech defense pitched a shutout last week against Boston College, only allowed 124 yards. And when we talked to middle linebacker Andrew Matua Pawaka yesterday, he said that they got tired of hearing how good the Boston College defense was, how they were the number one defense in the country. He said, hey, with Bud Foster, we've got a pretty good defense here as well, and they've shown it so far against ECU today as well. 
Yeah, and he's not a guy that gets overly upset, Roddy, but that was something that kind of riled him up a little bit. You know, Motua Pawak, a very calm guy. Bud Foster calls him as a racer. But, uh, yeah, he kind of got a little riled about the fact they weren't getting talked about defensively. Virginia Tech coming into the game, second in total defense in the nation, allowing just over 200 yards per game to the opposition. Nelson wants to go deep. Play it right at midfield. Two flags come out. Zay Johnson has the football. It looked like a one-arm grab. Well, well, working against Brandon Faison, an outstanding cover corner, but he never looks back for the football. And watch the one-handed stab by Zay Jones. Wow. Now the flag is going against the Pirates for an Ill ineligible receiver downfield. And also the penalty against Faison, so they'll offset it. Again, this is another area that's been a point of emphasis for the officials that they're going to watch the offensive line. If they stray too far downfield, they're going to get flagged for it. This is the second time Scotty Montgomery's team has gotten flagged. This time pulls a big play back from Zay Jones that would have put the Pirates out near midfield. That negates a 34-yard catch by Jones with just one arm at midfield, but the ball will come all the way back. To the 17 yard line. Scotty Montgomery is the first year head coach for the Pirates. After three years as an assistant at Duke with David Cutcliffe, that one drops to the turf. Incomplete. Ricky Walker got a piece of it for the Hokies. Tom and I don't, if Ricky Walker doesn't tip the ball, it's a nice play by Walker. I think Kenny Canham, number four, is going to intercept the screen. There's the batted ball, but he can't him standing right there. You see him put his hands on top of his head. He's going to intercept it and maybe walk in. So Virginia Tech is all over ECU on offense. Anthony Scott to the left of Philip Nelson. Second and ten. A handoff and a short game. Tim Settle, can he can him? Now for the first time in a long time, Virginia Tech healthy across the board. And you knock on wood every time you mention that around Virginia Tech, they've had so many injuries. But their defense has been able to stay on the field so far this year. Obviously, only in week four, but they've been able to keep their main line, front line guys on the field. Third and ten for the Pirates. Nelson gets it away, but this one is going to sail into the Virginia Tech bench area. Looking for Zay Jones tied up there by Adonis Alexander. Well, Adonis Alexander jams Zay Jones at the at the snap of the ball out of bounds, and he literally had Zay Jones out on the, the hokey bench. Outstanding job by the sophomore corner. Six foot three to 190, 195 pounder. He's a he's a tough matchup. Virginia Tech's defense doing an excellent job against this pirate offense. Which averages 370 yards through the air, best in the conference and seventh in the nation. But they have been minimized thus far. Stroman backing up, watches it bounce, feels it at the 27, and then goes out of bounds beyond the 30, maybe to the 33. Let's check in on our Charlotte studios and the Cavaliers have an early lead, Katie. They do, Tom. Let's head to Charlottesville and it looks like Stan's Hoos are back on track. Unfamiliar territory for my Hoos this year, but Kurt Banker passed to Alameda Zaccheaus. We call him the O. 15-yard touchdown. Who's on top? Virginia on top, 7-0. Tom, Dave? Come on, Stan. Show a little bit of uh, unbiased there. Come on. you got to stay neutral if you're going to be in the studio there now. Rocco Mendenhall and the Cavs looking for their first win of the season as they started 0 and 3 but had that lead against Central Michigan takes us right to around the ACC presented by Mattress. Well, you talked about Florida State bouncing back. Obviously, Dalvin Cook playing extremely well early in the game. We got a number of good games coming up this afternoon. This will be Williams trying to string it out. Does not get much. Maybe to the 35. There is officially no gain on the play. Now, this is something that the uh, the the Virginia Tech is extremely excited about to see Marshawn Williams back on the field. Tom, you mentioned 81 yards late in the game last week. Got in, got a lot, a lot of play time. Guy coming back from injuries, knee injuries. Was the featured back two years ago for the Hokies. Evans. Back the other way. Complete to Cunningham. 
And that'll be a first down beyond the 45 to the 47 or 8-yard line. And 13 yards on the pass to Chris Cunningham, the redshirt freshman. Boy, he shows a lot of athleticism. Here comes all the way across the formation. Nice job of, of kind of disguising the play by Evans, then get it back to his redshirt freshman tight end. Sam Rogers barrels his way up the middle. That's the only way number 45 runs. 5'11", 230 pounds, and a senior for the Hokies. All everything plays all over the field. Fullback, tight end, running back. Quick pace to the offense now for Virginia Tech. Wearing those orange effect metallic helmets today for homecoming. Now, Futrell, we mentioned his play early in the game against the option. Here he is, number 44, going to crash down to the inside. True freshman from Winterville, North Carolina, makes a nice play right there. Third down for Virginia Tech. Neither team able to convert a third down so far in this game. Well, kind of the calling card for both these defenses are very good in third down defense. 50% on the season on third down for Virginia Tech trying to convert here. There's some separation down the sidelines. It was Ford diving for the end zone, but he went out of bounds at the six yard line. Uh, Ford's going to get in the dead spot. Just a little fake to the inside. He's got man coverage inside, but a safety over the top. Safety can't get there. A big time throw from Gerard Evans. And just stepping on the inline or stepping on the sideline kept. Isaiah Ford out of the end zone. Trying to double him over there, Tom, playing inside man coverage with a safety help over the top. Didn't matter, Ford got clean. 39 yards on that play. Williams trying to get to the goal line. Continues to muscle his way. Trying to drag that pile into the end zone. And it's a touchdown. Well, Tom, this is a feel-good story. Marshawn Williams, I mentioned the featured back a couple of years ago, tore an ACL, did not play last year, trying to come back. Last week was his first time back out on the field. This is his first touchdown since 2014, and a big moment for Marshawn Williams. Kind of a junior mode. We called him beast mode a couple of years ago. Looked a lot like Marshawn Lynch. Looked like him right there, a little help from his offensive line mates. Drag in that pile, six yards for the touchdown for Virginia Tech. Sly with the extra point. Got to have plays to set up the end zone play or the red zone play. Here it was the start, a throw down the sideline to Ford. Ford punches it inside the 10 yard line and then hand it to your big back at 240 pounds. A little help from the big guys up front. Lynch shoves it in the end zone. I'm sorry, Williams shoves it in the end zone. Virginia Tech marches it right on down the field. That pass from Evans to Ford was 39 yards. Capped by the six-yard run by Williams. Six plays, 66 yards in just over two minutes on the drive for the Hokies. 14-0 against the Pirates who have won the last two meetings between these two teams. And this is an East Carolina team. It's a really good football team. Has already beaten North Carolina State this year. Really, in, in I think anybody's mind that watched the South Carolina game last week felt like had East Carolina been able to close the show and finish in the red zone would have won that game going away as well. Dave, you're right. They had 519 yards of total offense and 34 first downs, but still lost 20-15. to 15. Summers is coming out. Up to the 15. And there's a lot of orange helmets around Summers to bring him down beyond the 15 yard line. 18 yard return for Summers. Here's our Coca Cola ACC standings, and we start in that Atlantic day with Louisville undefeated. Now, on Louisville play later on against Marshall. We know that uh, Florida State took the loss last week. They look like they're, they're playing pretty well today, but Louisville Clemson next week. Big matchup between those two teams. And the Coastal, we've talked about it being wide open. Georgia Tech took it on the chin on Thursday night to Clemson. Big game between Pitt and North Carolina today. Obviously, Virginia Tech playing today. Miami goes to Georgia Tech next weekend. A lot going on in the Coastal side. First and ten for the Pirates. Nelson heaves it. Twisting grab near midfield. Zay Jones. How did he do it, Dave? What a catch. 
This kid made a catch earlier that was that was that came back because of penalty. Same matchup. Brandon facing outstanding cover corner. Big time throw on the outside. But how about the grab by Zay Jones? 33 yards on the catch by Jones and into Virginia Tech territory. This is Jones upright at the 45 and trying to get to the 40. The first down marker at the 39 as Faison moved him out of bounds after a nine yard pickup. Roddy Zay Jones is a guy you spoke to this week, the record setting wide receiver. You're exactly right, Archie. When I talked to him, he said that Justin Hardy, a guy that you're familiar with down at the Falcons, actually gave him a call and congratulated him on his 22 catch day. But you could tell there was a little saltiness there because it's Hardy's record for catches in a game that he broke. Summers is into the game for East Carolina. He's going to take off. And the Hokies saw it coming. Tremaine Edmonds, three yards on the play for the Pirates. But they're able to convert, Tom. They moved the chains there real quickly on that. Yeah, Justin Hardy plays for the Falcons. Got a chance to visit with Justin this week. He said, hey, I was really congratulating Zay Jones on the record, but is he going to break the rest of my records? Because <laughs> Justin Hardy holds the ball. He's the all-time leading receiver in NCAA history at the FBS level for catches in a season. Zay Jones trying to go get him. Five catches for 59 yards for Jones, who averages almost 150 yards per game receiving at his best in his conference. Nelson has to run away from pressure and does get it away. It was Andrew Motuapuaka who was chasing him down. Well, Nelson is it moves enough to, to keep game, it plays alive, but if he gets to escape out of the pocket, then Motuapuaka, with his ability to close, was able to close out Nelson and make him throw the football away. So. The guy they call the eraser in this defense erased that play, but it didn't look because it looked like Nelson had bought himself some time to the outside. Motua Puaka, the junior from Virginia Beach, Virginia, came into the game leading the team in tackles with 29 and second of the ACC. Nelson, incomplete, looking for Jones. And that is going to be the last play of the first quarter. An 87 yard touchdown return on a punt by Greg Stroman. The big play in the first. 14 0 on to the second in Blacksburg on the ACC Network. You're watching ACC Football presented by Mellow Mushroom. Take a look at the stats from the first quarter. 14-0, Virginia Tech has the lead as we get ready for the second day. Well, what does it look, which you don't see in there, the numbers look relatively the same. Virginia Tech at 87 yards on the punt return by Stroman, and all of a sudden you see where it's 14-0, and really the total yards in a major league in favor of the Hokies. East Carolina's 0 for 4 on third down in this game. And the quarterback, Nelson, just won completion in his last nine attempts third and ten Philip Nelson over the middle of the field that's Jones in a seam and inside the ten they convert on third down and much more on the pass play to Zay Jones 28 yards just a three-man pass rush they do a good job of sorting that out give Nelson time and then zone coverage down the field Zay Jones running the deep over route and it's a nice job of throwing it over that intermediate coverage and in, in front of the safeties to Zay Jones. East Carolina, 11 of 16 in the red zone this year. Eight touchdowns. They'll run it with Scott, and he gets hit near the 10. It's a loss of one on the play. Another one of those young guys up front, Trevon Hill, makes the play, the redshirt freshman. But Scotty Montgomery's got to be pleased with the fact his offense has been able to move the chains a little bit now. And this is the area that plagued East Carolina last week. Two interceptions, a fumble, and a missed field goal. They're hoping today they've righted the ship. Three turnovers inside the 10-yard line of South Carolina. This is Summers in the game. Trying to work his way to the five, but he won't get there. He's stopped by Chuck Clark, who would not let go. Well, that tells you a little bit about how tough Chuck Clark is, how strong he is. 6'1", 205, Chuck Clark, number 19, going to come down against Summers. Summers about 225 pounds. Good job by Clark to get him on the ground. 
This is where Nelson's got to be careful of the ball. Through two interceptions that we just documented last week. They want to come away with points here. Anthony Scott, the running back to his right. Third and goal. Nelson buys some time. Now steps up. Avoids a couple of tacklers, but cannot avoid the third. Now, once again, you, the first guy you got to take care of, you got to take care of Zay Jones. Okay, Zay's going to run the shallow drag. He's underneath the zone coverage. You see, there's a there's a hokey pretty much every area of the field he runs to right now. to get the quarterback on the ground. Good coverage and good defense by Virginia Tech, but a nice job of Nelson taking care of the football. Chagog made that tackle. The field goal attempt is blocked. Virginia Tech has the football up beyond its own 40-yard line. They blocked the field goal attempt from Davis Plowman. Was a big Tim Settle, number 97. We know Adonis Alexander scooped it up, but uh, some big bodies on the inside for Virginia Tech. It's something they've done a lot of over the years. Let's see who gets the big paw in the air. Yeah, big Tim Settle busts through right through the middle and bats the ball down. And had Alexander been able to scoop here, he probably scores, but couldn't scoop it on the on the first hop. But Virginia Tech comes up with another play on special teams. That was a 26-yard attempt by Davis Plowman, blocked and recovered by Virginia Tech, up to their own 43-yard line. Boy, Tom, the woes continue for East Carolina in the red zone. Missed the field goal last week. Get one blocked this week. Just can't seem to complete the deal when they get down close. Block kicks the calling card of this defense as Evans tries to scramble. Got away from two guys up the sideline. And Evans out of bounds just short of midfield. Maybe the 47 for Evans. A yeah, pretty strong run here for Evans. Not sure why he didn't unload it. He had a receiver down the near sideline. It was open, but he pulled it down. And then it stiff arms the linebacker into the ground for Troll. 240 pound quarterback. Evans gets rid of it quickly. Bucky Hodges. Hodges sliding down to close to the 40. 11 yards. Evans to Hodges on the play. Got East Carolina in a blitz. It's the perfect call. The tunnel screen got Hodges at six foot seven, 240 pounds. Going downhill with the football and another first down for Virginia Tech. Well, Hodges had to retrieve his shoe, get it right back on, and get him on the play. Bucky Hodges, second team all conference a season ago. Has the most receptions of any tight end in school history. He'll give it to the bruising back, Sam Rogers. He goes up the middle for eight yards. Dave, when we chatted with Sam Rogers yesterday, he just likes to prove people wrong. That's all. Yeah, he came in here as a walk-on. Now, once he got on campus, he wasn't a walk-on for very long. But uh, he's a guy that just has so much versatility and is a great teammate. And the, the, the price on that, you cannot put a value on it. Evans elects to keep. Hops over the 30 and down to the 25. Jordan Williams on the tackle. More on Sam Rogers as we go down to Roddy. Tom, you and Arch mentioned that Sam Rogers was a walk-on coming to Virginia Tech. The only offers he had coming out of high school were St. Francis and Bucknell, but he said he knew that he could play at this level. All that he needed was a shot. UVA and Virginia Tech asked him to come on official visits, and as you said, Arch, once he got on campus, he won the starting fullback job as a true freshman walk-on, so he was not a walk-on for long. They put him on scholarship immediately. Yeah, his versatility is incredible. He's an excellent blocker on the perimeter as well. A little razzle-dazzle here. Ford wants to throw it. He has an open man, but it's incomplete. Looking for Chris Cunningham. Tom, that's one of the hardest things to do is to throw the ball on the run. When you throw the ball on the run, the ball is going to tend to sail the same direction you're moving. This time Ford has Cunningham wide open, but because he doesn't really square his shoulders up, the ball just going to kind of sail on him a little bit, and he could have handed it to Cunningham for the touchdown. Cunningham does have a touchdown grab this season. Evans now wants to work towards the pylon. Up and making the catch. Isaiah Ford into the end zone. Touchdown, Virginia Tech.
Tom Foot said, and Ford said, wait a minute, I don't throw the ball, I catch the ball. Okay, throw me the ball, I'll put it in the end zone. Ford with another touchdown, closing in, Tom, on the all time record here at Virginia Tech. 24 yards on that touchdown grab. And now just one away from tying the school record for receiving TDs held by Antonio Freeman. Well, Joey look, Sly in there, Dan. And when you look at him on the field, he's not a dominant guy from a size standpoint. He's got good size, but he's about 190 pounds. He's just an acrobatic, tremendous wide receiver. Well, the Hokies have started fast in the last couple of times they've played East Carolina. Can they hang on? Because you can bet the Pirates are going to take their shots. ACC football is being brought to you by New York Life. With the right guidance, everyone can be good at life. By Coyote Tractor. By Hardee's. And by your local Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. Those some of the displays in the Virginia Tech football offices, and that includes Frank Beamer's number 25, Beamer Way, the address of the stadium, and his number 25 is being worn this season by a special teams player. That guy right there, Isaiah Ford, made a special catch to complete that drive. Six plays, 57 yards for a touchdown, his 21st of his career. Tom, you ran into Beamer earlier today, did you not? I did, and I said, Coach, what about the players wearing your number 25 and he just had a huge smile and said I I almost feel like I'm in the game and the guy who is wearing his number 25 Greg Stroman made a monster play in the first quarter 87 yard punt return by Stroman it was the big play of the game that kind of got this building in a fever pitch as Stroman finished that then a big play down the sideline when you get the ball to Isaiah Ford led to the Marshawn Williams touchdown run from seven yards out and then the play we just saw again Isaiah Ford steps up the big timer the All-American makes a play in the left corner of the end zone for the third touchdown remember now this is a Virginia Tech team that got out to a 14 nothing lead against East Carolina a year ago and East Carolina stormed back First and 10 for East Carolina. Stroman, third longest punt return in school history for a touchdown. That pass is incomplete, looking for James Summers. 87 yards on that return. Williams powering in from six yards away and then 24 yards for Ford who also had a key catch on the drive which Williams completed with the TD run. Yeah not eating up a lot of clock either. Just uh, just under four and a half minutes to score those three touchdowns. Nelson now six of 14 87 yards for the Pirates at quarterback and in the shotgun. Second down pressure just had to get rid of it. Hill came right up the middle in the grill of Philip Nelson. This is a kid that had 23 sacks as a junior in high school at Salem High School in Virginia Beach. He's right over here on that left side of your screen. Got a knife to the inside. Had a little stunt going. Little ET stunt. Tackle go outside. In come to the inside. Nobody accounts for him in protection. And he's able to get right in on Nelson before Nelson gets at his feet. Philip Nelson just two of his last 12 pass attempts and now third down for East Carolina. Dropped it off incomplete Devin Anderson. Incomplete pass. Tom this play is out the gate. They caught Virginia Tech with everybody back to the inside. This screen is going to go for big yardage. There's nobody home for Virginia Tech. And Anderson just could not reel it in. Boy, an opportunity there to make a play for East Carolina. And I think Scotty Montgomery knew it. He had the perfect play call right there. Five times today they've forced three and out against what is a very prolific passing attack from East Carolina, but it has been neutralized so far. And that punt is blocked. The punt by Gregory gets blocked. Cam Phillips got a piece of it out of bounds deep in ECU territory. Well, the shield does not account for Cam Phillips for some reason in the punt block. 
Cam Phillips, big time wide receiver. He's going to come right through the middle of the protection. Go ahead and roll it, guys. Number five, right in the middle. He just doesn't get accounted for in the screen. See the shield? They just let him run around the backside or the outside. And Phillips in for the block. Boy, this is uh, true Virginia Tech football today with the way the special teams, that's our second block kick in less than two quarters. And now for Virginia Tech, 68 block punts, 68 over the last 30 years here in Blacksburg. It's, it's an part, amazing number. Yeah, it's part of the DNA here. You get, you're going to make plays on special teams if you play at Virginia Tech. No question, Coach Beamer in his suite here at the stadium. Big smile after watching what has transpired so far today. That is Trayvon McMillan trying to dance his way down to the 22-yard line. The clock will continue to roll at a three-yard game for McMillan. Well, an important series of downs for, for East Carolina now defensively. Got to find a way to get a stop in a short field situation. Excellent defense here. Little misdirection. Get Trayvon McMillan the football, but a good job by ECU to smell out that play and drop it for a minimal game. Second and eight for the Hokies. Evans. Evans inside the 15. That should be first down yardage. Trevon Simmons had the tackle, but Evans runs for seven yards. Yeah, physical runner, 6'3, 240 pounds. The run designed for him all the way. You get Wyatt Teller out in front, number 57, gets the block to free his quarterback up, and now another first down inside the red zone. Right back to the line of scrimmage for Virginia Tech. They can get a first down at the three yard line. Evans, McMillan has a blocker. McMillan to the end zone for the Hokies and a touchdown. Excellent job of play calling. Looked like they're going to throw the ball to the front side, set up the three count screen to the back side, and just a walk in for McMillan. And East Carolina just doesn't know what's coming next offensively. A lot of success in the run game, outstanding success with the vertical passing game, and now the screen. Add that to the list of Virginia Tech in their execution offensively. Second TD pass of the game for Gerard Evans hit Trayvon McMillan who did the rest and the Hokies are dominating 28 nothing at Lane Stadium. You are watching the ACC Network an exclusive production of Raycom Sports also streaming live on the ACC.com and on the official ACC mobile app. Today's coverage of ACC football being broadcast on AFN, the American Forces Network. We welcome the men and women of the U.S. Army, Air Force, Navy, Coast Guard, and Marines stationed around the globe in 175 countries and on the high seas. So proud to have you with us and hope you're enjoying the broadcast from Blacksburg, Virginia. What a day so far for Virginia Tech. 28 to nothing, just over nine minutes to go. In the second quarter. Well, the execution in all three phases of the game today for Virginia Tech has been off the charts. They blocked a field goal, a punt, returned a punt for a touchdown. Created an absolute nightmare for the Pirates on special teams as Summers gets it up to the 25. Back to Charlotte. We check in on the Cuse, Katie. Thanks, Tom. And Coach Syracuse out to a hot start. Uh, Eric Dungey's new best friend, Umba Editaro, in the end zone for the Orange. His number is 5 for 118 with two touchdowns. That's all in the first five minutes. Syracuse up 14 to nothing. How about that? The alma mater did pretty good. <laughs> I, you know, I noticed there was there was good inflection in Coach's <laughs> voice there. I think he's trying to pump up, pump you up there, Tom. Well, they're trying to get their second win of the season, their first true road game against UConn. Summers up beyond the 30-yard line. Andrew Motua Puaka making the tackle, eight-yard gain for the Pirates. 
good running by Summers there. Option play, get Summers the football. Our first and ten line brought to you by the North Carolina Education Lottery, celebrating their tenth anniversary and over four billion dollars raised for education. Summers in a quarterback here in the Wildcat set. Summers tries to take off, but he's dragged down at the 30 yard line. Woody Barrett drops him for a two yard loss. Well, they're going to pin their ears back when they see this set. But Foster just spoke to us yesterday, talked about how good a runner Summers is, and really embarrassed Virginia Tech a year ago with 169 yards on the ground and a couple of touchdowns. They said, hey, when the big fella lines up and we're there, we think they're going to run the football, we're coming after them. Bud Foster, 30th year as the defensive coordinator here in Blacksburg. Just one of seven on third down for the Pirates, and Nelson is back in. He's being pressured, and that pocket collapses all around him. Cannon Cannon has the sack for the Hokies, and it's a 10-yard loss. And he's a guy we featured in our Food Lions Impact player. He'll be on the left side of your screen, number four, going to come with pressure off the edge. Speed rush around the corner. Nelson has no chance to step up in the pocket and Kenny Canham now with three and a half sacks on the year. Stroman waits for the punt from Worth Gregory who has been a busy man for East Carolina. Stroman waits at the 35 before the play can start. There is a timeout on the field. And it's taken by the Pirates and Scotty Montgomery just shell shocked here in the first half trailing 28 to nothing and they're giving the ball back to Virginia Tech when we come back and we'll be back after a word from your local ACC station. Download the ACC QB Challenge presented by Coyote Tractor. New and improved quarterback your favorite ACC team. Practice your passing and compete against other fans. Download for free today. Stroman is the deep man for Virginia Tech. He's at his own 38 yard line. Worth Gregory to punt. From his six. Stroman watches that one sail out of bounds and we'll head down to the sidelines with Roddy Jones. You know Tom the foundation of this Virginia Tech program was built on special teams and they've come to play today. Greg Stroman with a big punt return for a touchdown over 80 yards. The Virginia Tech Hokies got out to a hot start. Then they're able to block a field goal that was almost returned for a touchdown. Adonis Alexander not quite able to pick it up but they weren't done. They blocked a punt as well and when we talked to coach Justin Fuente he, meant, he said that they mentioned that they've been beat the past two times by East Carolina and he hoped that his team would use it as fuel for preparation for this game and so far with the 28 nothing lead it looks like they've done exactly that. Got to go all the way back to the September of 2013 when they blocked the field goal and the punt in the same game Roddy and they got it done here in the first quarter. Evans sidesteps a man now throws the deep ball it is caught down by the 12 yard line it's Isaiah Ford. Again, they'll spot it at the 10. 45 yards. Evans escapes and then throws it to Ford. Well, usually throwing the ball deep is a bad thing. Late. Gets, he gets a little tangled up right there. Looked like he hurt his ankle a little bit on the play. But the big arm to shoot it down the field to Isaiah Ford. And then watch Ford gear down and high point the football. Nice job. But it looked like Evans twisted his ankle and is actually down on the field right now. Boy, that is not good news. And he could not fight through this. He twists his ankle in the middle of the play and still completed the throw down the field before he kind of succumbed to the pain here. Evans in the game now, 7 of 8, 155 yards in the two TD passes, but they'll check on Evans and we'll step aside. The training and medical staff attending to Gerard Evans, who had to leave the game with an apparent right ankle injury. Well, watch for it. I think when he tries to avoid right here, he twists his ankle right there as he starts to step out of it. Now, he's hurt right now. 
He's going to let this go after he gets hurt on the play. Outstanding effort by Gerard Evans to get that ball to Isaiah Ford. Now Brandon Motley, who Brandon Motley is in the game, is no stranger to playing. Tom, six starts a year ago. A little bit more of a runner than passer, but he did have some success throwing the ball last year. Evans is now up to 12 TD passes on the season to lead the conference, but again, he has had to come out of the ball game here late in the second quarter. After that long pass play to Isaiah Ford, here's Motley trying to turn the corner. Puts the orange helmet down and gets down to close to the seven, maybe the eight yard line. Trevon Simmons made the tackle. Motley had three rushing touchdowns a year ago, but he was the starter against East Carolina, East Carolina a year ago, threw for 281 yards, an interception, and a touchdown. So Motley's played a lot of football for Virginia Tech. Also ran for 85 yards in that game last year. In fact, that was his career high and got it in the end zone for a rushing TD in that win, 35 to 28. Or a loss rather for Virginia Tech. This is Motley shifty and inside the five. Bowden had the tackle. As Evans watches the big scoreboard here at Lane Stadium and his teammate Brendan Motley got it to the three yard line. So now Joey Sly will come in for a field goal attempt. And a Three nice, five on the season. And a nice job by Motley to take care of the ball down there. Did not force the ball into coverage. Coming in cold off the bench. Did a good job of, of making sure he secured the opportunity for Sly to come in and put another three on the board. This is a 20 yard field goal attempt for Joey Sly. Three more points on the board for Virginia Tech. Field goal from Sly, 31-0. We go to our Charlotte Studios for a preview of halftime. Well, coming up at halftime, lots of action all around the ACC. We're going to dive into it, but a good game going on with Virginia and Central Michigan. What have you been watching? Right now, Virginia, right now, 0-3, playing a 3-0 team. Central Michigan, plenty capable of beating them. Not a Power 5 team. Bronco Mendenhall has his team focused. A huge lead. Huh? And down in Tampa, Florida, it's been all about Dalvin Cook, really. Get concerned about teams coming off an emotional loss rather than emotional win. Florida State led by Dalvin Cook, almost 200 yards rushing in the first half my brother's back to business and we are going to take a look at all the highlights from that Clemson Georgia Tech game so make sure to keep it right here we've got you covered for the halftime report for now though we'll send it back to Tom and Dave it's a lot of celebrating in the stands homecoming Lane Stadium 2016 and a 31 to nothing lead as we close in on halftime here in Blacksburg Really special teams plays have been the signature today for Virginia Tech. This is Summers out of the end zone. And Summers close to the 18 yard line on the return. The Ram power play brought to you by Ram Trucks. Guts, glory, Ram. Lamar Jackson capped Louisville's emphatic victory over Florida State a week ago with a 47 yard touchdown scamper. The weaving run highlighted a five touchdown effort from Jackson who has the Cardinals atop the Atlantic Division and up to number three in the AP poll. That is our Ram power play. Well, what a fun guy to watch watch play. Look at the numbers. Number one across the board there in the ACC except for passing yards and those numbers aren't bad. Dynamic player for the Louisville. He has accounted for 18 touchdowns this season for the Cardinals are on the road against Marshall. This is Jimmy Williams and Williams goes all the way up to midfield and dives into Virginia Tech territory on the pass play. Edmonds made the tackle but 34 yards later. Yeah and a nice throw from Nelson to Williams in the zone and once he caught the football nobody in that third level of the defense until Williams is able to push it on the hokey side of the 50 yard line. Nice play throw and catch quarterback receiver there. Pirates won the meeting between the teams in Greenville, North Carolina last year. Nelson pressure got it away. Jones twisting inside the 15 and incomplete. Boy, Canham dropped the hammer on Philip Nelson here. He's trying to stay alive long enough to get the ball to his big timer Zay Jones and watch the hit by Canham number four. And he's feeling the effects of that. He's a tough guy. Got up off the field, but they're going to let him get a breather. They're going to bring Summers in to gain a quarterback. 
7 of 18 and 121 yards passing for Nelson. He is leaving the football game and gives way to James Summers. Summers keeps it. Gets around the end by Reynolds. He's got first down and more. And inside the 30 as he goes out of bounds, forced out by Clark. And 20 yards, James Summers on the run for the Pirates. Yeah, and Mook Reynolds makes the key mistake here. You cannot lose leverage to the outside. All this helps back inside. Watch the move by Summers to get, Nel to get Reynolds to bite to the inside. And then as soon as he got to the perimeter, a lot of room to run for the big fella. Seven carries and 31 yards for Summers, who stays in. First down for East Carolina. Anthony Scott. Ricky Walker's number 98 for Virginia Tech. A lot of rotation going on up front with those defense that, that defensive front for Virginia Tech. And see Philip Nelson jog back onto the field after the big hit. Nelson threw for 297 yards and a TD in the upset victory against NC State a couple of weeks ago to extend the winning streak against Atlantic Coast Conference teams to six for East Carolina. A lot of work to do here with three minutes to go. Nelson flushed away and pursued by Barron. And Woody Barron hurt himself there, Tom, as he tried to push Nelson out of the pocket. Woody Barron. One of those big fellows up front, really kind of the heart and soul of their defensive interior part. Woody Barron, the motor, and just kind of as he dove, you see him reaching for that left side. Mentioned they rotate a lot of guys up front, but Barron, their senior, and really a guy that plays with a with a motor that just never quits. Senior from Nashville, Tennessee, was on pursuit of Philip Nelson. Yeah, just a non-contact play here. He doesn't get blocked. He just kind of, when he dives here, just injured himself reaching out trying to get Nelson out of bounds. <laughs> 42 games for Woody Barron as a Hokie. He's going to walk to the sideline and Ricky Walker will come in to replace Woody Barron. Well, hopefully Barron's okay, but you know he's going to take a lot of grief in the film room tomorrow when he goes in. And they say, wait a minute, nobody hits you. What'd you do to yourself? But hopefully Barron's okay. Hopefully it's not an injury. Third and 11 for East Carolina. Ball on the Virginia Tech 30 yard line. And 2.54 to go in the second quarter. Nelson. Floats it incomplete. Quay Johnson, the attended receiver. Terrell Edmonds, number 22, back in coverage for Virginia Tech. Tom, just enough pressure up front for Virginia Tech on a number of these throws that Nelson can't wait that extra count. Scotty Montgomery really was excited about the fact that this kid can shoot it down the field, and they'll go for it here on fourth down, down 31 to nothing. And Dave, they've been very successful on fourth down this year. Five for five for the Pirates. In 2016, this though is fourth and 11 for Nelson. Let's it fly, looking to the end zone, Jones, and it's incomplete as Edmonds came over to help out on coverage. Also Stroman. Yeah, and this is kind of an invert coverage from Virginia Tech. They let their corners play back and the safeties play in in that intermediate area. And Stroman's a corner. Number 25, he's playing half the field. He realizes he throws down the middle. So he comes in to help his safety made on the inside, Terrell Edmonds. So kind of reversal of, of jobs there. Corner helping out the safety on the inside coverage. So it's going to be the Hokies taking over on downs. 2.43 to go in the second quarter, and Jerron Evans has returned to the game for Virginia Tech. McMillan, the back to his right. He's caught a touchdown pass today from Evans, who has thrown two TD passes. Isaiah Ford caught the other one in the second quarter from 24 yards away. Bailey had the stop of McMillan. Demaze Bailey does a nice job of playing off the block here and limits the game to just less than a yard. Yeah. 
McMillan driving over that 35 yard line for five yards. He ran into Jordan Williams, number seven, in white, gold, and purple. Yeah, good blocking on the perimeter again for Virginia Tech to get the edge. That time Stephen Peoples was blocking the edge, got to trail the linebacker block and allowed them to get around. And now, if you're Coach Cornelson, the offensive coordinator here at Virginia Tech, you love these down in distant situations on third down. Evans can run it. You can get McMillan running the ball. Screen is available. A lot going on here for Virginia Tech play call wise. Evans moves McMillan to his right. And as looks to the sideline. On third and four. That ball complete at the 45 yard line to Jalen Bradshaw. Nine yards in a very small window, but success for Evans and the Hokies. Boy, you said it, Tom. This is a well thrown ball on the upfield shoulder. Sargent is there. He dives to try to swat it away, and Bradshaw is able to squeeze it on this contested throw. Ball on that upfield shoulder, upfield number, well thrown by Evans. Time out of the field, taken by Virginia Tech. Isaiah so, Ford, record setting receiver for Virginia Tech, already has a TD grab in the game today, Dave. Yeah, the guy's been unbelievable. Contested catch, uh, fighting off a jam here by Sargent, and then going to high point the football that's underthrown. This is the play Evans got hurt on, and then his ability just to go get the ball here on the high fade for the touchdown, his touchdown catch today. His numbers against East Carolina now, this is his third game against East Carolina, so essentially 10 quarters of football. He has 19 receptions for 299 yards in three, in three touchdowns in 10 quarters. <laughs> he loves playing against East Carolina. He's got four today, 117 yards and a TD. He's got, has 154 career TD, uh, receptions, rather, and that is third best in the school history. He's well over 2,000 yards receiving in his Virginia Tech career. The junior from Jacksonville, Florida. Evans now trying to go deep. Looked like Ford was out there trying to run under it. Incomplete. Yeah, excellent coverage on the outside this time. If you look to the outside, good coverage by Gore. Colby Gore, he's a freshman. Pretty good job against one of the best receivers in the country right there. Never allowed Ford to get on top of him. Gore came in, enrolled in January, early enrollee, and has done a nice job fitting in here defensively. Second and 10 with 113 to go in the second quarter. Evans has the time. He's going deep. It is caught. Caught by Phillips and a touchdown, Hokies. Fifty five yards Dave on the touchdown. Yeah Cam Phillips is in the slot and he just runs the seam and for some reason Deshaun Benton drops coverage number six turns him over to Bobby Fulp the safety but Fulp's running the other way Benton should have stayed on coverage and he was hanging his head as Fulp came over and said hey what are we doing there. Obviously a blown coverage by East Carolina good vision good knowledge of what's going on by Evans to put it right on his big time receiver Phillips. Second TD grab of the season for Phillips. 38 to nothing with just over a minute to go here in the first half. We thought Virginia Tech would come out strong and play spirited football, but did we expect this, Dave Archer? Tom, I'm stunned. I am stunned. We talked to Scotty Montgomery during the week about his team and how disappointed they were with the loss last week, a game they really dominated, 500, over 500 yards of offense, just couldn't finish in the red zone. He felt like they had a good week of practice, but they have just come out and gotten blitzed by Virginia Tech. And how about Virginia Tech over the last two weeks? Are you kidding me? What is it, 87 to nothing is the score in the last two weeks, last, last six quarters? 87 to nothing. Beat Boston College a week ago, right here at Lane Stadium, 49 to nothing. They have posted 38 points in the first half today against East Carolina, which has won the last two meetings between the teams, including two years ago right here at Lane Stadium. That streak in severe jeopardy for the Pirates. 
Sly will blast this one through the end zone. The AP Top 25 brought to you by Progressive Insurance. And for the first time since the mid-2000s, four teams from the ACC in the Top 15. Well, in that matchup next week is going to be a lot of fun. Number three and number five are going to play each other. Louisville's got a date with Marshall later on today. They handle their business. Obviously, those two top five teams will do battle at Memorial Stadium, Death Valley up in Clemson. That'll be a heck of a battle between those two teams. Two dynamic quarterbacks going head-to-head. -head. Florida State taking care of business right now. Looks like Dalvin Cook back on track. And don't sleep on Miami. By the way, Dalvin Cook, 185 yards. Looks like he's got his mojo back if you will but Miami now they've got a big time quarterback and they've got two running backs that can tote it down there in Walton and Yerby. Cook has amassed that yardage for Florida State on just nine carries and the Knowles lead 38-14 against South Florida. That's at the half. Summers gave it to Scott. Five yards for Scott and we're inside of a minute to go in the first half that has seen Virginia Tech post 38 points against East Carolina. When they last met two years ago here in Blacksburg, the Pirates won 28 to 14. Today, a much different story between the Pirates and the Hokies. Summers cannot string it out. Tremaine Edmonds swallows him up. Terrell Edmonds also there. The Edmonds brothers combining. Uh, just the, the defense has been outstanding. Look at the leverage. Keep outside leverage. Force, force uh, Summers back to the inside, and then that's where all your help is going to come from. You know, we couldn't get anybody to talk about a chip on their shoulder, Tom, coming into this game. But you could tell it, and you could see it in the eyes of the coaches and the Hokey players. They wanted this one. A long walk to the locker room. Now it's a jog for Scotty Montgomery and the Pirates. And as we've seen him do. In the early season here, he gathers his team. Justin Fuente, the first-year head coach, they come together. That is what they have done symbolically in the first half, dominating, Dave, the first 30 minutes of this game. They have owned this football game. They've owned the last six quarters of football. 38 to nothing as we check in with Roddy. Coach, you said that you wanted your team to use the past two years against this team as fuel for preparation. How have you thought they've done the first half? Well, I've been pretty proud with how we've played in all phases of the games. We've made some big plays in special teams. We haven't run the ball away. I'd, I'd like for us to run it, but we've made some plays in the passing game, and then the defense has been really, really good. You mentioned the special teams. This program has built its foundation on it. Talk about how big that was for you. Well, it's huge, and, you know, special teams and great defense wins games. And, uh, you know, that emphasis hasn't changed with the new head coach here at Virginia Tech. So uh, we do our best to live up to the fantastic standards that Coach Beamer set here at Virginia Tech on a daily basis. And sometimes we do, sometimes we don't, but uh, they're doing pretty well so far. Thanks, Coach. Well, Katie, it's been all Hokies here in the first half. The defense has brought the lunch pail, and the offensive special teams have brought the Pop-Tarts and the snacks. Let's see what's going on in the rest of the league down there in Charlotte. Yes, we will take a look. Watch out. I thought one of the band members was going to take him out there for a second. Coach, you heard what Coach Fuentes said. He looked like he was a happy guy. You're pretty happy, too. Uh, we are witnessing Beamer Ball on steroids right now. Yeah. Shut out. Bud Foster defense. Blocking kick. Scored in the kick game. But, Stan, what about the offense? 38 points. Where is this coming from? Yeah. Yeah, as I mentioned in the pregame, all of the guys are doing the, thing that, doing the things we thought they would do. Gerard Evans, Cam Phillips. Uh, we got Isaiah Ford. I'm concerned, however, that run game, only 3.3 yards a carry versus ECU. I'm concerned. Oh, man. I feel like we're so positive and we're so excited about these 38 points, and he's saying he's concerned over here. We're going to bring complete down football. We got highlights from all around the league. Keep it right here. We're going to take a look at those when we return. Welcome back in. Our action for week four started on Thursday night. Clemson headed down to Atlanta to face Georgia Tech. Let's get to the highlights right now because this was a good one. And Stan, Deshaun Watson, he got going early on in this game. Looking like the Deshaun Watson we remember four a year ago. Electric in the pass game, getting the ball right there to Mike Williams. 66% completion, two touchdowns, did have the one pick, but played more like himself. 
Later in the first quarter, Christian Wilkins, a big sack, and coach that D was good. Uh, Dabo Sweeney's got to be pleased with Brent Venables and the Clemson defense, holding Georgia Tech to 124 total yards, the lowest in the nine-year tenure of Paul Johnson at Georgia Tech. Travion Thompson with a score right there, but now miscommunication. I mean, well, what's going on right here, Coach? We told him when you get the ball in the end zone, take a knee, get it back out on the 20. All, all of a sudden, try to run it out. Get, stay in the dead gum end zone. Look, we told them that. Each other. <laughs> oh. We told them that. The, they get the ball back, though. Clemson on the very next possession finds Jordan Leggett. Basically, ran away with it from there. It was their first win in six tries at Bobby Dodd. Stan, were you impressed? No, I wasn't. I expect the more talented Clemson offense to do what they do. They've got more talent, more players on the defensive line. We saw that show up in the gate, that triple option. And I'm concerned. Why is Deshaun Watson throwing the ball 48 times against Georgia Tech? All right. Well, we'll see if they can do it against Louisville. But in action right now, number 13, Florida State at South Florida. And Stan, it was Quinton Flowers with a big 84-yard bomb to Rodney Adams. Did this make you nervous or what? Uh, I was never nervous. I have faith in the nose, but I do know okay. Willie Taggart, coach of USF, has that Gulf Coast offense. He smelled blood trying to catch Florida State reeling from last week, took a shot, touchdown. But coach, as you can see right here, Dalvin Cook got going and uh, couldn't stop. That was a 75-yard run. Uh, Stan keeps talking about Dalvin Cook coming alive. Nine rushes, ooh, 185 ooh, yards. Ooh. He's Averaging 20 <laughs> yards per carry. Also had 46 receiving yards, 231 total yards in the first half. Dalvin Cook is back. And as you can hear, Stan excited about the fact that Dalvin Cook is. Would you like to do that again? Oh, you <laughs> I can't do it too much. My people in Charlotte will <laughs> get upset. But listen, they've got they've been here before. They're talented enough. They got a good head coach. He's accustomed to winning 10 games or more. They'll be fine. Settle down, people. All right, and as you can see, they're on top in a big way, 38 to 14. <laughs> Time. Another guy having a big game, Cam Phillips. A 55-yard touchdown pass, Virginia Tech up 38-nothing. We've got more. Stick around. Download the ACC QB Challenge presented by Coyote Tractor. New and improved quarterback, your favorite ACC team. Practice your passing and compete against other fans. Download for free today. Welcome back. He's the coach. He's Stan. I'm Katie. We've had a busy day so far in the ACC. Our Mellow Mushroom Game of the Week has been exciting. Let's take a look at how we got to halftime. And Stan, the Hokies got going, and they got going early. Easiest way to get to from point A to point B, straight line. My man Stroman takes the ball, wearing that beam of 25. To the house, gets Virginia Tech on the board to start the game. Seven zip, beam of ball, full effect. 87-yard punt return. That got Virginia Tech on the board. But Coach Marshawn Williams, he wants in on the action. A six-yard run here. This looks like old-school Virginia Tech right here. Punishing, running attack, just bullied his way in. Great push by the offensive line. And then Isaiah Ford, Stan, we heard you talk about him all day long in the pregame show. Good catch from him. We talked about in the pregame tracking the ball. That's what that is. Isaiah Ford touchdown. Gerard Evans getting it to him. And special teams. Coach, I mean, you said Beamer ball on steroids. You weren't kidding. I tell you what, this is what they love to do. Play great defense. They've shut them out so far. Scored in the kicking game. Blocked the field goal. Blocked the punt. And then have really put up a lot of points. What stood out to you, Stan? I mean, obviously the score line stands out to me, but when you look Look at where we are at halftime. What jumps out? What jumps out is, again, Marshawn Williams. I need that group to get going. Right now, they're being led and rushing by Gerard Evans, their quarterback. I need Marshawn Williams and crew to do more on the ground. All right, well, in Syracuse, they are at UConn. Syracuse jumping out to an early start. Coach, I know you're big on Eric Dungy, and you said he's got a new best friend. Uh, Umba Edatawo right here. Great run and catch. Tremendous concentration by the receiver, but also the athletic skill to get in the end zone after the catch. 57 yarder right there. Edatawa leading the ACC in re receiving yards, just adding to it right there. Other games, though, in the ACC Central Michigan and Virginia in action. As you can see, Virginia, your who's all over them there. Stan, you. you been happy? You got a bad I'm not face. happy. Listen, yeah, I'm looking that. at this box score, and I don't want to be the contrarian here, but I guess that's part of my role on this show. <laughs> Listen, 
Giving up 14 unanswered points in the last four minutes of a half, unexcusable, coach. That loss interest happens <laughs> sometimes <laughs> with a young team. It's, it's too easy early. You lose interest. Let a good team, Central Michigan, who's undefeated, come back and score 14 All points. All right, and as you guys can see there, Boston College on top of Wagner, 21 to 10. You get these guys going beside me, and I can't get them to stop. Another guy who can't stop, the big man, Marshawn Williams, plowing his way through. A six yard run. We've got more from the guys after a word from our local ACC station. Geico presents the best of the ACC. Pitts Juan Price has been in the backfield all season long and he's leading the ACC in tackles for loss with over seven on the year. The list is rounded out with Duke Edgefor from Wake Forest, Connor Struhan at BC and a pair of NC State defensive linemen. While Virginia Tech's Gerard Evans has flown under the radar for much of the season, but the newcomer to the Hokies offense has been off to an incredible start. He is today, too. He's got 10 touchdown passes thus far, placing him atop the ACC. And guys, that's our Geico best of the ACC. Well, Coach, you mentioned it. Beamer ball in full effect today, and man, we've seen it. Uh, Frank Beamer's going to let Justin Fuente be a member of the family. Block the kick and score the kicking game. Beamer ball. Love Beamer ball as a player gets you on the field. Yeah, it does. Hey, thanks for watching the halftime report. That's it for us. When you come back, you will be in Lane Stadium with third quarter action. Thanks for watching. Hey, we're Skillet, rocking ACC football on the ACC Network. Booyah! Skillet's been rocking our games this season. The band joined our team in 09 with their double platinum single, Monster. And they're kicking off our coverage every Saturday this year with their hit single, Feel Invincible. The band hit the road two days ago in Omaha tonight, then Louisville next Sunday, and a couple of dates in Virginia in mid-October. So check out all of those dates for the Unleashed Tour at Skillet.com. We welcome you back to Lane Stadium in Blacksburg. Tom and Dave with you here before we kick off the second half. And Dave, an absolute clinic by Virginia Tech in all facets of the football game. Yeah, well-oiled machine, maybe too overused, but I think it certainly applies at all three facets of the game for Virginia Tech. And ECU can't stay on the field one for nine on third down. Let's take a look at the Toyota game summary, the visual illustration of what has happened so far today. Evans and Ford, a couple of the big parts of an offensive effort today by Virginia Tech. Yeah, and a bit of a miss. Right there, that's 9 of 11, not 9 of 22, 9 of 11. So his completion percentage off the charts plays all over the field by every facet of the game. All right, for a report down to the sidelines, we go to Roddy Jones. Tom Arch, I had a chance to catch up with ECU head coach Scotty Montgomery just a second ago and asked him, what are you looking for for your team in the second half? And he said execution. He said this Virginia Tech team is the most physically talented team. They've played by far, but they're losing the one-on-one -on -one matchups. So he wants to make sure everybody does their job, and then you got to win some of those one-on-one -on -one matchups you're going to get back in the game. Well, there's no question that the one-on-one -on -one matchups, they've had some moments where Zay Jones, a number of plays have been made, but uh, when you talk about the special teams and the plays they've made in the special teams category, those, those are the ones that really bother you as a coach. And these are some of those plays, when you talk about the punt return, that really kind of got the, the fever pitch going here at Lane Stadium. When Greg Stroman took set sail on an 87-yard punt return, Block field goal looked like ECU might get on the board there with a nice drive, could not cash it in. And then, of course, the third of the special teams plays, Cam Phillips comes across and blocks the punt to set up another score. And it has just been a wave coming at him. When you start talking about Frank Beamer and the special teams here, and I thought that uh, Coach Fuente said something pretty cool as he left the field to Roddy Jones. He says, you know what? That's always going to be our DNA here at, at Virginia Tech. We're going to play well on special teams. Just because we changed head coaches doesn't mean I don't want to play great special teams. ACC football is brought to you in HD by your local Tire Pros dealer. Win a VIP trip for two to the ACC championship game and Continental Tires at TireProsSweepstakes.com. That location of that championship game to be announced. And East Carolina, one of the best passing offenses in all of the country, Dave. Big problems in the first half. 
They just could not stay on the field and get first downs. One for nine on third down. Virginia Tech, outstanding job leveraging the ball. Only 24 yards rushing for, for East Carolina. That was something they needed to be able to do to keep the Virginia Tech defense off balance. No return on the kickoff. Defensively, Matua Puaka and Kenny Kenham. Well, you, we talked about Motua Pawaka being the eraser. When someone gets to the outside, where's 54? Well, he's usually in your hip pocket. And the guy that's been dropping the hammer on the quarterback, he can't him. It was Luke Reynolds making a hit, but here's he can him, number four, getting around the quarterback as well. So you could probably pull every number for Bud Foster's defense today and say something about a positive. They've gotten after ECU so far. A sack and a half in the game for he can him. First down for the Pirates, and this is complete. Jimmy Williams, and Williams has room to run, trying to get to the end zone, and he's there. 75-yard touchdown pass for the Pirates to start the second half. This is an aggressive style of defense most of the time under, uh, under defense coordinator Bud Foster. Bump and run coverage on the outside. Excellent job of Williams being physical with Adonis Alexander, the corner. He's able to push away and gain some freedom and then an excellent throw by Nelson. And hey, it's, we got a whole half of football to play now and East Carolina ain't going anywhere. Took 11 seconds to start the second half. For the Pirates to get their first points of the game, 75 yards, Jimmy Williams. Matchup on the bottom of the screen, bump and run coverage. Just beats the jam and then willing to put his guy up the bat. Physically wins over the top, does Jimmy, Jimmy Williams. He gets Alexander in a trail position and an excellent throw by Nelson. And these uh, ECU came to compete now. They, they got beat up a little bit in the first half. You bet Scotty Montgomery is going to be an excellent football head football coach at the college level and he's going to keep his guys playing and they showed it right there. Jimmy Williams with his second TD catch of the season. Philip Nelson now has eight TD passes came into this game today leading the American Athletic Conference in touchdown passes and yardage passing so Coach Fuente's team allowing a TD on the very first play from scrimmage a career long catch and run for a TD for Jimmy Williams 75 yards as Stroman will wait for the kickoff from Caleb Pratt. Greg Stroman returned to punt for a touchdown today for Virginia Tech. A couple of strides deep but he's coming out of the end zone wearing that number 25 to honor coach Frank Beamer and up to the 25 maybe the 26 for Stroman on the return. Our first and ten line is brought to you by the North Carolina Education Lottery celebrating their 10th anniversary and over four billion dollars raised for education. A little huddle to the offensive unit down on the sideline get the get the play call really the only time Virginia Tech goes to some semblance of a huddle is right on the sideline because they're an at the line of scrimmage tempo style team but they get the play they want the personnel group they want on the field. Now they've got to try to answer the first score from East Carolina. 9 of 11, 219 yards through the air for Evans and three TD passes. Not a lot there for Virginia Tech as Sam Rogers had the carry. An explosive first half for the Hokies. It started a little slow, three punts, and then from that point on, they decided to put points on the board. And it didn't take them long. Three plays, five plays, a couple of six play drives. Evans. Going deep. Ford had a step, but the ball was too far. Isaiah Ford, who is one of the best in the country at creating separation and has a TD catch in this game, incomplete on that play. Uh, give Corey Sargent uh, some, some uh, number five, the corner, a little bit of credit, a little bit of jam on Isaiah Ford. And that's what you try to do to disrupt timing. Get a little bit of a jam on the receiver on the outside. Ford couldn't get off the jam as quickly. And so Sargent gets some credit there for. Maybe disrupting the timing on the fade throw. Virginia against Duke in Durham, North Carolina. Our game on the ACC Network. 
ACC football presented by Mellow Mushroom. That's our matchup next week. Everything gets started at noon with the ACC Blitz. Katie, Stan, and Tommy in our Charlotte studios as that one is incomplete, targeting Ford. And Ludwig will have to come in to punt. Yeah, shaky start here. Uh, this is a throw where he's got Ford wide open. He was 9 of 11 in the first half with Gerard Evans. This ball isn't even in the same zip code as Isaiah Ford this time. It's completely overfrozen. Quay Johnson ranging back and to the left at the 15, and he is dropped inside the 10. Terrell Edmonds, the tackle on special teams after a 57-yard punt from Ludwig. Edmonds finds Johnson and drops him on special teams. ACC football is being brought to you by Food Lion, raising standards without raising prices. How refreshing. By your Carolina Ford dealers. By Geico, saving people money for over 75 years. By Mattress Firm. And by Bojangles. It's bow time. The enormous indoor practice facility here on the Virginia Tech campus. Dave, you can fit a couple of jumbo jets in that thing and get lost in there. Uh, it's spectacular, beautiful place, and you got to have them now to get part of the amenities the kids are looking for. Amazing facilities here at Virginia Tech. Nelson's pass complete over the middle. That's first down yardage and more for Quay Johnson. And now he got the 40 and trying to get to midfield before he's tackled out of bounds by Alexander. Well, good job by Nelson to extend this play and then find Johnson. He's the second leading receiver. We haven't even mentioned Quay Johnson's name. Did a nice uncover. He slid back to the inside, got away from Motua Pawaka, and then nice run after the catch. This is an offense that had come in with 20 plays of 20 plus yards. 41 yards on that pass play and into Hokie territory. They'll flip it out to Summers. And Summers puts the head down and submarines his way inside the 40. Motua Puaka made the tackle, eight yards, the run by James Summers, the senior from Greensboro, North Carolina. Uh, you love the resolve that Scotty Montgomery's team has come out with here in the second half. Had the big play to start the half. Have had two nice plays, one in the run game, one in the pass game in this drive. Second and short, and Summers will remain in the game as the quarterback here, replacing Nelson. Anthony Scott is to his left. I don't know if the ball was ever snapped as some flags come out. Seven seven. Five yard penalty. Second down. Jeff McConaughey is our referee, and that one went against ECU. No, and it changes the dynamic of the play now. You go from second and two now to back to second and seven. So now Nelson comes back on the field to put the pass game back into the offing here for East Carolina. That's that's irritating to Scott Montgomery. He looks on. Third penalty on the Pirates, but it could be a big one, forcing them into a second and long situation. Second and seven. Spinning away inside the 35 is Zay Jones. That's a first down, 10 yards. Zay Jones is going to stand up and throw it outside. Got a one man screen, get the block on face on. He's going to have to make somebody miss, which he did. He stepped around Tremaine Evans and hits it up the field for a first down. A little sense of urgency. Obviously, they're way down, but this East Carolina team still playing. Seven catches for Zay Jones and 97 yards. Flip it out to Johnson. Tries to turn it back inside, short of the 30 yard line for three yards. Vinny Mahoda, sophomore from Fredericksburg, Virginia, 6'5 at 270 pounds. Again, just a one man screen to the outside, switch it around. Zay Jones blocking his time for Quay Johnson. Quay Johnson gets about three. Good job of rallying to the tackle that time by Edmonds. Last five plus games, Zay Jones has 72 catches, make it 73 at the 15. 16 yards, Dave Archer, and the chains are going to move. Outside technique corner, just run the slant to the inside. There's no coverage inside. Just an easy throw and catch for Nelson and, and Zay Jones. So Nelson, who struggled in the first half so mightily, has now made five of his last five passing attempts. Feeling the rhythm, looking for Jones. It was nearly intercepted at the goal line as Jones 
had to turn into the defender. Adonis Alexander had a chance to make the play and did, but incomplete. Yeah, Alexander is the guy that got beat on the first play of the half and bump and run. This time does a much better job of staying in position. He never loses leverage on the receiver. In fact, is in great position. Probably should have intercepted the pass. He's a talented sophomore from Charlotte, North Carolina. On second down, this is Jones trying to find some daylight. Not a lot there. Seth Dooley's number 43, and that's a loss of three. And Zay Jones's helmet came off the field, off him, so he's going to be off the field here. Dooley with the flow. Look at the leverage outside by Faison, and now Zay Jones, whose helmet came off, will have to sit on the sidelines on third down here. Third and 13 for the Pirates. Pressure coming. Motua Poaka was on the pressure, but the pass is complete. Anthony Scott. Oh, Zay Jones is the announcement. No, it was Scott. Yeah, You're exactly Scott. right. Right. The, the back coming underneath. Excellent call, Tom. Back slips out underneath. They get him the football on the move. And he's close enough to where obviously they'll they gotta go for it here on fourth down. Zay Jones back on the field now, and he'll be at the top of the screen. In fact, Jones and Johnson are your receivers to the top of the screen. Philip Nelson, the quarterback on fourth down. Need to get to the five-yard line. Nelson to the end zone. Too far for the intended receiver. It was Anthony Scott. Oh, they had it too, Tom. This is a pick play. You call it whatever you want to, rub route, whatever. Zay Jones comes to the inside, and he actually rubs off the coverage man. Just a poor throw from Nelson. So another opportunity for the Pirates, and they can't catch it in in the red zone. Lane Stadium, Virginia Tech leading 38-7. Here's the pick play that we were talking about that coaches don't take a call. Here it is right here, folks, right there. The little little pick play, just dump the ball to the back and the flat, and it's a walk-in touchdown. Faison comes off late, the corner, but it would have been too late. Nelson tried to loop it, just overthrew him, threw the ball out of bounds. So golden opportunity for East Carolina and, and goes for not. Pirates with nine plays and 80 yards and come up empty on fourth down. Virginia Tech will run it as they start from their worst field position of the football game. Williams on that first down carry, short game. Yeah, important for uh, Virginia Tech now to refocus offensively. They didn't have a very good series last time they touched the ball. Went three and out. Uh, here just a yard gain on first down, so they didn't need to match the intensity of East Carolina. And that ball thrown into the flat and incomplete to Williams. Well, flat might be the operative word because that's <laughs> the way Virginia Tech has come out here in the second half. Played a great first half, but this looks like a completely different squad here. So just like that, it's third and nine now for Virginia Tech. I have not mentioned Bucky Hodges' name all day long. He's down here at the bottom of the screen. Just one catch in the game for Hodges. Evans from his own end zone. This is Sam Rogers. Rogers busting past the 20 yard line. That's a first down for the Hokies. Hey, when you need to get back in sync, who do you call? Mr. Rogers. Sam Rogers on the screen here. He's going to make a defender miss right there, and then just the power to push ahead for the first down, extend the drive. 12 yards on the play for Rogers. There is a shaken up East Carolina player. That's Dimitri McGill, a senior from Virginia Beach, Virginia. So while they attend to McGill, we'll go to our Charlotte studios. Thanks, Tom. Our Hardy's update takes us to Connecticut, where the Huskies tied it up. UConn smelling some blood. Arkeel Newsom, six yard touchdown run, not scared of Syracuse. They played ACC four last week. That leads to three points, 47 yard field goal by Cole Murphy right before the half. Syracuse on top of Connecticut, 17 to 14. They are at halftime. Tom Dave. Good battle going on there. Syracuse trying to scratch out a win. And Connecticut also out of the uh, American Athletic. 
conference. Here's the injury. Again, it was McGill, 56 and white. Yeah, so often with these big guys, it's about getting rolled up in the pile. Look like Teller almost got rolled up 57 as well. And that's what it is. This is the leg whip. You see McGill, 56, gets kind of caught up, gets his legs caught up in the pile there. And, well, you hope that McGill can return. Talking to these ECU coaches, McGill really the heart and soul of their defense, the energy guy, the motor guy. Evans. Hodges diving for the catch at the 45. Bucky Hodges outstretched at 35 yards. Well, it's about protection. Can you give your guys long enough to get off the jam? And they really do a nice job up front. Evans is able to sit in a nice solid pocket and then a well-thrown ball in the fade as Hodges wins against Sargent on the fade route. From the 44, this is Rogers. Rock to the turf at the 40, four yard pickup. Sam Rogers, the senior from Mechanicsville, Virginia. Bowden had the tackle. Rogers again. Slight hesitation. You saw him bang his right fist on the grass, day frustrated and taken down at the 40 by uh, Demanche Bailey. Yeah, Tom, that looked like that was a play that had something in it. And had he been able to slide to his right, which he was eventually going to get there or trying to get there, but Bailey was able to get in and get around the legs of Rodgers because he'd gotten by that first tackle. There was some room to run. Third and six for the Hokies as Evans looks to the sideline for instruction. That Ford one on one at the bottom of the screen. Evans with the time looking for Ford. Tried to sidestep the defender. That was Sargent who was with him. And a couple of penalty flags are out on the play. Defense number five. First down. This is so hard for a corner when you get in a trail technique in the hip pocket of the receiver and the ball's underthrown purposely. This is the back shoulder pay, fade or, or throw it short purposely so Ford can come back and catch it. And really, Sargent's got no chance to stay out of the way of Ford trying to come back for the underthrown throw. First and ten after the penalty. Ball spotted at the 25 of ECU. McMillan up the middle. Nothing there for McMillan, but the clock will continue to roll. Now 7.19 to go as we go down to Roddy. As I've just kind of walked down the East Carolina sideline, and Demetri McGill is on the sideline. He's got his shoe and his sock off, visibly frustrated. Doesn't look like he's going to return anytime soon. When we get an official word, I'll let you guys know. Yeah, Roddy just got that lower leg rolled up, and you get a big fella like that, twist the ankle, really tough to generate any drive or push, especially against this Virginia Tech offensive line. Evans hangs on to it. Evans inside the 15 and close to the 10. Bailey had the tackle, but the sticks are going to move. Haven't seen a ton of option out of Virginia Tech today, but that's all this is. It's just option to the left side. And just a really nice job of pushing up the field. And yeah, with, with McGill on the sideline, that makes that play maybe even a little bit easier to handle if you're Virginia Tech's offensive line. Hokies are three for three in the red zone today. A couple of TDs and a field goal. Rodgers bounces outside, trying to turn that corner. He put the shoulder down near the five yard line, ruled out at the six. Sam Rogers hit by Simmons and six yards. Boy, nice paces by Rogers. Gonna wait for Gallo, 64 the center. So he gets right in his hip pocket. Gallo gonna turn back and get that block right there. And then Rogers is down the sideline. Just nice patience by the senior to wait on his center to get that little seal block for him to get the edge. He carries and 26 yards for Rogers. Gets the call again. He's close to first down yardage, Dave, with a three yard pickup. Pratt on the tackle. Running hard on the inside, Sam Rogers. You kind of like to, if you're Virginia Tech and Coach Carnelson, the uh, offensive coordinator, probably give Rogers a little payoff here for a touchdown. Well, he got very close to the first down, and there's the announcement first and goal for the Hokies. Had to get inside the three, and that's what Rodgers did. 
Roddy Rogers running at a high level. They're doing a good job of pushing the line of scrimmage back against ECU. You're exactly right, Arch. Justin Fuente talked about the fact that he wanted his team to rush the ball a little bit better. But I just saw number 69 for East Carolina, Justin Brown, starting defensive end on the sideline with his pads off as well. So East Carolina down two starting defensive linemen on this drive. Wow. Well, Dave, there's a bit of stoppage of play for a review of the spot. Again, on the field, they had said it was a first down. There was an announcement in the stadium that it was a first down, but. And these are really tough, Tom. When you look at it in a scrum like this, and you see our first down line, obviously, officials don't have the privilege of seeing that line. It's really difficult to see from that angle where Rodgers goes down. Good hard running to the inside. ECU getting a lot of hats to the football. Knee down there, but. Really no indication as to where that might be. So it's kind of at the discretion of the official that called it on the field. As you said, Tommy called it a first down. Let's take a look from the all 22 angle up top. It's not going to be anything definitive. It's going to tell you the ball needs to be a, you know, a foot further back or a foot forward. I think that uh, ultimately this will be a play as stands is called be first down for Virginia Tech inside the five. Jeff McConaughey is our referee today. Tom Zamorski is the replay official. Scotty Montgomery is the first year head coach. Just got steamrolled in that first half, and the passing attack was not there to the credit of the Virginia Tech defense. Scotty Montgomery's team, one of the best passing teams in all of the country. In fact, his quarterback, Philip Nelson, led the country in completion percentage. The first half was not kind, though, to Nelson, who did throw a TD pass to open up the second half. Well, it's interesting. Something had to give, didn't it, when you came in? You had the top completion percentage quarterback in the country coming in, and, and Virginia Tech was only allowing quarterbacks to complete 37% of their passes coming in as he, we see McGill headed towards the locker. Boy, that's... That's not a good sign, obviously, for the CCU team. Replay has determined that the runner's knee was down at the two and a half yard line. Be third down. Okay, that's, uh, I don't know how they determined that, because we couldn't determine it and we're up here. But uh, maybe that's them throwing a bone to, to East Carolina. I don't know. I didn't see that, but uh, gives East Carolina an opportunity here on third down now to force. Virginia Tech have to kick a field goal, so they got an opportunity to get a stop here on third down. Dave, this is the 11th play of the drive. Virginia Tech three of eight on third down this afternoon. McMillan is the back. Evans looks to the end zone and off of the fingertips of Chris Cunningham. He went for the end zone on third down that close. Yeah, Virginia Tech will keep their offense on the field. They're getting to the line quickly. I would assume this is a running play. I don't think they'll, I think they're going to try to pound it straight ahead. Fourth and one. Evans tripped up. It's going to depend on the spot as Benton tripped Evans as he was headed down toward the two yard line. It's going to depend on the mark here, though. Yeah, I don't think he got there. He's short. They had to get past the three yard line and they marked it right on the three, it looks like. And that's a heck of a play by Benton. The safety is going to knife in and make the tackle on Gerard Evans. Dave, they didn't even bring the sticks out onto the field. Deshaun Benton makes the play defensively on fourth down. ECU has the ball, and we'll be back after a word from your local ACC station. Back in Blacksburg as we look at our Haviland defensive shield, and it features the Virginia Tech special teams play today. A couple of block kicks, Dave. They had a punt return for a touchdown, too. They've been outstanding, and uh, it's been a big part of why Virginia Tech is leading 38 to 7 in this game. So we talked about the Beamer ball. Well, it's really Virginia Tech ball. You know, this is just your, Coach Fuente's team now, and they're just continuing on the on the same path of making problems, giving problems to the opposition and special teams. Summers will take the snap from his own end zone. Pressure coming. He's dropped in the end zone. Ikanum, Edmonds, safety, Virginia Tech. Well, Summers is still down on the big hit. It looked like the ball came out. Let's see if the ball comes out. Nobody blocks either Barron or 
or Edner. I'm sorry, you can him. Or uh, Edmonds coming off the edge. Did the ball come out and see where the ball came out? It was a signal safety. Yeah, the signal by the official was right on top of the play was safety. And I waited a couple of seconds because he was trying to make a determination as well. And Canham now with two and a half sacks in the game as Summers goes to that sideline, a little bit groggy. Well, we talked with Bud Foster yesterday, and they like the slide protect me, and they're going to move their line to the right. Let's see what happens here. Nobody accounts for either Edmonds or he can him off the edge. Just complete blown assignments up front. And boy, Summers pays the price. I don't know how Summers hung, hang on to the football, hung on to the football. Took a tremendous shot from McCannum. We talked about our food line impact players of the game defensively and mentioned that this is a team that wants to throw the football and make some plays in the pass game. McCannum was going to have to come up big. Well, I would say you can check that box off. Number four showed up. Sam Summers is a tough young man, but Kenny Cannum. Drop the hit on Summers. He's now has five sacks on the season, two and a half in the game today. So Worth Gregory will kick it back to Virginia Tech. Greg Stroman and CJ Carroll back there. Gonna be Stroman. Gains his 40. Breaks it outside, breaks a couple of tackles, and rumbles his way up to midfield as we go to our Charlotte Studios and check it on the Virginia Cavaliers. Hit screen, where was, why, why didn't, oh, number 80. Our Hardy's update takes us to Virginia and Stan, a big pick six for Central Michigan. You cannot make mistakes like this in the red area. Kurt Banker throws a lazy pass out there. A. Coleman returns the ball for the Chippewas, 47 yards, 21-28 UVA. Well, you can hear the pain in Stan's voice as he says, talks about the uh, Wahoo mistake. You know, Virginia will be part of our game next week on Ball the start. ACC Network and ACC football. Number 71, five-yard penalty, first down. Virginia's playing Duke. There it is. Yeah, Duke takes on what Notre Dame today. Yes, later on today, 3:30, fifth all-time meeting they've never won in South Bend, Notre Dame, Indiana. First and 15 after the penalty. Evans felt the pressure, got away, stutter step, he breaks free. Evans to the near sideline. Has a blocker in Phillips. Evans continues on down toward the goal line. And he is in. Touchdown, Jerron Evans. Boy, this is an unbelievable effort by Jerron Evans. You know what comes to mind on this run, Tom? is a run that Steve Young made against the Minnesota Vikings in the National Football League where he virtually had made everybody miss wearing a white hat. And look at him reach at the goal line to get the ball in the end zone. What an amazing run by Gerard Evans. Dave just trying to catch my breath. 55 yards. Take us through it, Dave. Well, there it is. Evans wants to throw the ball down the field, but when he decides to pull it down, he's as good a runner as there is on the field. So he's looking downfield now. What can I do with it? Now he's going to get a couple really good blocks. One of them by Bucky Hodges. We've got just a piece of the defender. And then you talk about will to get in the end zone now. Make people miss. Get me in the end zone. Gerard Evans. Cam Phillips comes in to try to get a piece, doesn't really do anything. He's just making guys miss that are overrunning the play, and then he gets in the end zone. And if you want to go back and look, go back and look at Steve Young. Just YouTube search Steve Young against the Minnesota Vikings. Iconic run 
by the 49er quarterback. It looked just like that right there. How many tackles did he break, Dave, on the way to the end zone? What a run by Gerard Evans. Several Pirates had a chance to pull him down. They could not do it. Slippery and Evans into the end zone. And I would think that my, that might have been the curtain call right there. Maybe that was the only thing. Uh, he, I would take him out of the game at this point. He's done virtually everything he could do to help his Virginia Tech team win today. There will not be a return on that kickoff. What a day it has been for Virginia Tech. How many exciting explosive plays can they pack into one football game? They're trying their best. And the most recent one from Gerard Evans, 55 yards on the touchdown scamper. And I haven't heard electricity in Lane Stadium about a quarterback since Tyrod Taylor was the quarterback here for Virginia Tech. Now the leading, now the, the starting quarterback for the Buffalo Bills. Evans' numbers outstanding. He was 9 of 11 at halftime, so he tapered off, if you will. Roddy, kind of a virtuoso performance by the uh, the quarterback today. He is fantastic, and the transfer has earned the respect of the guys around him by his work ethic. Sam Rogers said that they're in the same lift group, and that's when he really bought him, when he saw the way he got after it in the weight room. Scott on the run for the Pirates. Well, and Roddy talking and talking about Gerard Evans and I talked about at the opening I think we knew the physical skills there he averaged 100 395 yards in junior college and threw 38 touchdown passes you knew the physical skills were there it was his ability to absorb the offense and then win his teammates over no question three touchdown passes in the game that touchdown run for Evans who now has 13 TD passes on the season to lead the conference. Scott again on the carry for East Carolina, which came out of the locker room, Dave, one play and they were in the end zone. Yeah, in fact, the first touchdown this defense had given up on this field in eight quarters of football. They, they blanked Liberty in the second half of that game and it, and they've done a great job against BC last week and of course the first half of this week. And the win against Liberty, we were here in week one, 36-13. Evans threw four TD passes in that effort. Did lose to Tennessee, but came back with the shutout against BC. And this is Jimmy Williams breaking away again. Williams trying to be chased down by Reynolds, who won't get there. Jimmy Williams, another big catch and run for a touchdown for the Pirates. 70 yards this time for Williams. Uh, it's just a blown play by the safety, Terrell Edmonds. That's why he's in that spot as a safety. He has to make that play in that half, half safety look. Once he gets behind the corner, Evans has to keep leverage on the play where he uses the sideline as an extra defender just overran the play and and that'll be one where Bud Foster will say that's a lazy play. They can't you can't allow yourself to, to mentally lose focus there and give up a huge play but with Jimmy Williams credit continuing to compete he's had two monster plays here in the second half. Second TD pass from Philip Nelson to Jimmy Williams. They went for 75 yards to open up the quarter and now they go for 70 yards on this play. Jimmy Williams, the senior from Washington, North Carolina, breaking free of that secondary for a second time in this quarter against Virginia Tech. Well, this is this is kind of what we thought the offense would look like today against East Carolina. Give obviously Virginia Tech defense a ton of credit, but but Scotty Montgomery's team offensively has been outstanding. You mentioned the 500; they were averaging 550 yards of offense coming in. That was ninth best in the country. They came in with 20, 20 plays of 20 plus yards. It was an explosive offense that really has been muted today. 179 receiving net yards now for Jimmy Williams. That's a career best. That'll fire up Bud Foster, no question about it. Yeah, he just doesn't want to see the lapses in, in focus. I mean, his defense has played outstanding today. They've been suffocating the run game, but they have given up a couple plays. And, and if you're a coach, you obviously like those plays to be able to focus on to get that fixed. But a couple of big pass plays uh, for East Carolina. Nelson now up to 343 yards passing. Stroman from the one. Angles to his right. Cannot elude the coverage and short of the 15. Let's take a look at what you, the fans, are saying on the Mellow Mushroom tweets up. Well, this one, Gerard Evans doing his best. Lamar Jackson 
impersonation right That's, there, Dave. Yeah, nice call. Yeah, Lamar Jackson would be a good guy to compare him to. <laughs> Does it a little bit more with a big guy flair as opposed to that nifty, quick Lamar Jackson. A little bit more of a big guy attached to that run. By the way, Dave, Mellow Mushroom wants to give each of the folks who send in the tweaks a $100 in pizza. Congrats and look out for your Twitter message to claim your prize. That's nice. the Mellow Mushroom tweaks a $100 in pizza. Sure. Sounds pretty good. Gerard Evans. What a day. And you wonder if that touchdown play just reminded Coach Fuente of how explosive ECU can be, and they better get the number one quarterback back on the field. Evans responsible for 363 yards today. Let's take a look at the Haviland Player of the Week, and there he is, Lamar Jackson. Some folks call him Dave Lamarvelous. Ooh, from the Cardinals. Lamarvelous. <laughs> I like that. It's not mine. Well, it's not an original, the, but. Rename the Player of the Week for the last couple of weeks, the Lamar Jackson Award. Yeah, he's been incredible. They've scored 62 or more points. In each game, Dave, since 1930, they're only the second team in college football to do that in their first three games. Now, I know they played Charlotte and Syracuse, but then they played Florida State. We thought that game would be a lot closer, and it didn't happen. No, and I think they've just kind of proved that Louisville is, is pretty good. Now, they'll play the best defensive line in the country, in my opinion, in, in Clemson next week. Right. Certainly no disrespect to Charlotte or Syracuse, but we found out that Lamar Jackson could keep up that momentum even against... One of the top notch teams in the country, which by the way is winning today against South Florida. 48 21 for the Knowles, and that one is into the fourth quarter. Nice catch by Bradshaw here to come over the middle, and he, he took a shot in the helmet area. Hopefully, Jalen Bradshaw is okay. Going to come inside on the slant, well thrown ball. He's going to take a, there's going to be a collision at the back end of this. These are the ones that are scary. And it looked like a shot on the side of the head there. For Jalen Bradshaw. Dave, the defender coming in is number eight. That's Bobby Fulp. He got a little bit of that collision too. You see him kind of crumble down to the right also. It's good to see that Bradshaw able to walk off the field under his own strength. Yeah, Fulp. And they're pretending to Fulp too. Yeah, and that hip area looked like the helmet maybe hit him in that hip area or maybe even the lower rib area for Fulp. Looks like he's going to be okay. Dave, it was interesting when we talked to the Virginia Tech players and coaches, and they thought maybe they weren't ready to beat Tennessee on that giant stage at Bristol Motor Speedway. They made a point of it in telling us, though, in our meetings, that they were definitely ready for this matchup against East Carolina, a game they had lost two years in a row. Yeah, I don't think they had any, there was any way they weren't going to focus on this game simply because of the last two outings against the Pirates, but uh, there was some learning that went on about how to handle the stage against Tennessee. McMillan. Up to the 34 yard line Trayvon McMillan. He's got a touchdown catch in this game. Well sometimes it takes a slap in the face like this, this is a talented Virginia Tech team on both sides. We've seen it today. They, they got off to a great start against Tennessee up 14 to nothing and then got a little lazy with the football. Not a little. They got a lot lazy turned the ball over four times and some of the resolve that came out of that defensively trying to fix stopping the quarterback run which hurt him in the game with Joshua Dobbs but also their quarterback never wavered and I think that was something that impressed Coach Swanton. Five turnovers in that game against Tennessee as McMillan gets dropped. In fact coming into last week's game against Boston College they had fumbled nine times. They had zero fumbles against BC. They have not done so today against East Carolina. They have done a good job of not turning the ball over but they've had a tough time in third down in the third down area and, and here ECU trying to put them up against it again. Nice play by Bowden the, the, the linebacker there to force third and long to try to get their offense back on the field. Just 40 seconds to go now in the third period. Third and seven for Virginia Tech. But leading 47-14. Evans. Up beyond the 40 to the 42. It's incomplete. C.J. Carroll made what the fans thought was a catch. Ruled out of bounds. It looked like his, they, they're ruling that his back touches the ground before the left foot comes down. Let's take a look. He tries to get the left foot on the ground. Ooh. That might be one to take a look at. Let's look at that left foot. Does that left foot touch down? Yeah. That left foot's in bounds before Carroll. Roddy, you're right there. Tell me about it.
they're going to call this. I'm not sure he had control for the entire duration of the catch. CJ Carroll, the sophomore, with a spectacular diving grab. And did he get the foot down and did he have possession, as yeah. Roddy mentioned? Well, the foot's down. Now let's take a see, see if he's got hold of the ball. He's bobbling the ball. Is he bobbling the ball? Because the foot's definitely down. Yeah, it looked like the ball may have bobbled a little bit. He lost control of the football when his back hits the ground. Let's take a look. See how his hands kind of spread out and he uses his knees to squeeze the ball. I mean, Dave, either way, what an effort by the young man. Oh, see, the ball comes out of his hands. That's incomplete. Nice call by the official. He was looking right at it. Foot was down, and that's what we were all concentrating on, including the fans here. But the ball comes loose when he hits the ground. He didn't maintain possession of the ball. Have to review the rolling on the field stands. Fourth down. Now watch the ball here. The ball is juggling a little bit. The foot is certainly down. Watch the ball jar loose when he hits the ground. Rolls up on his leg. That's incomplete. Didn't maintain possession of the football. Good call by the official on the sideline. Four catches on the season for Carroll, but that one just could not hang on. That'll be a fair catch by Johnson after a 45-yard punt. Just beyond the 25, and there's a flag well behind the play. Yeah, personal foul. Dead hit the ball. punter. Late hit. Receiving team, number 80, 15 yard penalty, first down. Took a shot at the punter on the play right at the end there. It's going to cost them 15. It's like 80, Anthony Watley. Now Watley being uh, scolded along the sideline. Right. So just 23 seconds to go in our third quarter. So what's going to happen is the penalty will be assessed from the spot where the fair catch was made after the punt. Let's see what kind of conversation Bud Foster had with his defense. They've had a couple lapses in focus and it's led to do two huge throws and, and touchdown runs by Jimmy Williams. 30 years in Blacksburg for Bud Foster. So great to visit with him. Talk a little defense and schematically, one of his favorite words. Gang tackle on Anthony Scott. Now I learn stuff from Bud Foster, Dave, every time we chat with him. And this guy's been around the game for so long, but he is so enthusiastic and really so entrenched in Virginia Tech football. Yeah, what I love about it, you just walk in, you sit down. You don't even say anything. He just comes in and gives you a seminar. It's awesome. Yeah, it's been a great day for the Hokies. Couple of big plays by ECU in that quarter, but as we head to the fourth, 47-14 Virginia Tech in the lead. Our third quarter stats are brought to you by the North Carolina Education Lottery, celebrating 10 years and more than $4 billion raised for education. Learn more at nc-educationlottery.org. Tom, coaches have a screw, a lot of screwy stats. One of them is called double thud. That means a kick, you kick it and it gets blocked. That's called a double thud. Okay, when you get one, it's like 80% of the time you win. You get two, I guess that's a guarantee, because Virginia Tech's got two block kicks today. Block the field goal and a punt today. Returned to punt for a touchdown. That was Strowman who went 87 yards. And now Anthony Scott has the run to start the fourth quarter. 12 yards for a first down for East Carolina. Yeah, good hard running in the middle. This is an area where they have not gotten a lot of movement from Virginia Tech's defense, but a good job up front that time. Hit it for it for a first down run. Nelson quick trigger. Zay Jones got rocked. Chuck Clark was in there. Five yards on the play. Wow. Delivering the pain, number 19. Boy, there were a lot of hats that hit Zay Jones on that play. Just a quick screen to the slot areas. Jones showed his toughness there to get up, get, pick up five yards. Ten receptions on the day for Zay Jones, trying to follow up his 22 reception game against South Carolina. One short of the college football. 
Bowl subdivision record. Sack Virginia Tech. Tremaine Edmonds, it's the fourth of the day. Boy, this is a heck of an athletic play by a guy that's six foot five, 240 pounds. Tremaine Edwards. Just gonna keep his leverage, don't allow the quarterback to escape outside. Closes, puts him on the ground. His father was a heck of a player. Farrell was an all-pro tight end in the National Football League. His brother was a running back here. His other brother's a safety here. Edmonds are synonymous with uh, Virginia Tech. Loss of seven. Nelson steps up into double coverage and incomplete. Adonis Alexander got a hand on it. Zay Jones, number seven and wide intended receiver. What a really good job by Adonis Alexander to bait Nelson into this throw. He made it look like he was going to stay up tight in the flat, and he didn't. He stayed short, and as soon as the quarterback decided to load it up on the corner route to Zay Jones, he floated back and almost picked it off. C.J. Carroll at his own 29. Worth Gregory. Punting for the Pirates. It's a fake. And it was not a good fake. Cam Phillips again. He's the one who blocked the punt earlier in the game. Virginia Tech will have the football deep in ECU territory when we come back on the ACC Network. It's all Hokies. ACC football is brought to you by Geico, saving people money for over 75 years. By Coca-Cola. By your local Chevy dealers. By Haviland Motor Oil, proud sponsor of the Everyday Driver. And by Mellow Mushroom, a higher order of pizza. Just some of the exhibits inside the Merriman Center, which houses Virginia Tech football. Newly refurbished, put a couple of million dollars into that facility, and it pretty much documents the entire history of Virginia Tech football, which includes 23 straight bowl games, Dave. That's the best in the football bowl subdivision currently. Sliding down at the 10. It's going to be a catch. Motley threw the pass, and that was complete. It's Wilson, Devin Wilson, making the catch from Brendan Motley, who's back in. Had to come in for a couple of plays in the first half when Evans had tweaked his ankle. Yeah, not a bad guy to bring in the game, uh, whatever the situation is. Motley played a lot last year, six starts a year ago. In fact, started the game we mentioned earlier in the game. He started this game against ECU. Had over 350 yards of total offense in that game. Motley angles to the goal line and just short of the goal line. Nine yards for Brendan Motley. Well, just the option play and a good decision by Motley. Really defended pretty well. Take the pitch away. But Motley, just a big, strong guy. Rarely do you see a team take a quarterback out that's 6'4", 240 pounds, and put a guy in 6'3", 230 that's as good a runner. But Motley really does a nice job in the option there. McKenzie is the running back offset to the right. He's going to lead the way from Motley. Threw a block, and Motley got to the corner of the end zone. It's a touchdown, Hokies. Just a yard to get it to the house for Brendan Motley. The quarterback sweep all the way. You mentioned the lead blockers out and five shy. McKenzie gets the little edge block there. People's blocking as well. And Motley steps in the end zone really untouched. It's funny because we, we heard, you know, coaches try to find something to kind of say, yeah, we're not doing this that well. And we, we heard Coach Fuente when he went in with Roddy Jones and said, you know, we're not running the ball all that well. And they were over 100 yards rushing. He'd done everything <laughs> else pretty good. He tried to find something. And they've done a nice job running the ball here in the second half. That is the second TD run of the season for Brendan Mutley. Number nine of the end zone, 54-14 Virginia Tech. You're watching ACC football presented by Mellow Mushroom. That Virginia Tech defense 
Yeah, it's going to stifle, Dave. This is one of the best offenses in the country right here, East Carolina, yeah, but two, not today. Two big pass plays here in the second half for, you know, a couple lapses defensively. And yeah, obviously give East Carolina credit. They made the plays, but it really has been a suffocating effort defensively for Bud Foster's group. Virginia Tech defense. Came in as one of the best in the conference against the pass. We go to our Charlotte studios and check in on Virginia. Thanks, Tom. Our Hardy's update takes us out to Tampa. DeAndre Francois, he takes it himself. 35 yards. Florida State on top of South Florida, 55-35. Then in Charlottesville, Central Michigan with 28 unanswered. Uh, Chippewa quarterback Cooper Rush hits Corey Willis for 14-yard touchdown pass, making it 28-28. to Tie game right now, Tom. Dave? Wow, just down the road in Charlottesville, having a good one. Central Michigan trying to get to 4-0, Tom. Huh? They had that controversial victory earlier in the season against Oklahoma State. Where they were granted an additional play. Anthony Scott on the run, Edmonds on the tackle. That's 12 yards, and that's a first down for East Carolina. Virginia, we'll see them next week as they will take on Duke, which plays Notre Dame today. They played last year, and Duke was a winner 42-34. It was Virginia actually that took that victory against Duke last year. So they'll line it up again next week. Great defensive play right off the snap by Hill to wrap up the ball carrier and a loss of three as Scott got dropped. Well, you, you got to get the front line blocked. And, and there's been a number of times where Virginia Tech defenders have just stepped through unblocked and a really good job by Hill realizing that he could close and get to the back and get him on the ground. Freshman, redshirt freshman, Virginia Beach, Salem High School. The next, one of the next good ones is going to play for the Hokies for the next couple of years. So, David, looks like the winning streak for the East Carolina Pirates against the ACC is going to come to an abrupt halt here at Lane Stadium today. They've won six in a row against ACC competition and included two wins against Virginia Tech in their last two meetings over the course of the last two years. But today, the early knockout blow delivered by Virginia Tech on homecoming. Yeah, this the special team started the, the show with the punt return and, and really it kind of energized the building and energized both sides of the ball and Virginia Tech has not looked back. Three touchdown passes from Evans. An incredible 55 yard touchdown run by Gerard Evans. The Stroman return that Dave mentioned off of the punt for a touchdown, the second of his career. Breaking through is Anderson. That should be a first down for the East Carolina Pirates. Good hard running by not the. These two backs aren't gigantic for, for East Carolina. One's 210, Anderson's 210, Scott's about 190 but both of them run with some power to the inside that time Anderson with a good run to get a first down. Let's go down to the sidelines check in with Roddy Jones. Tom I had a chance to catch up with Zay Anderson earlier Zay Jones excuse me earlier this week and I asked him about Scotty Montgomery and he said that with his coaching pedigree having coached the Pittsburgh Steelers and the wide receivers that they have the wide receivers definitely take notice but the other thing he told me is that he's a coach that can get out there and actually demonstrate the routes how many coaches around the country think are going to get out there and run routes to show the receivers. Well, Scotty's in pretty good shape. Roddy and I got a chance to visit with him before the game. He keeps himself in pretty good condition and he teaches his receivers to be strong and tough as well. You see running through tackles here to pick up the first down. Excellent job on the outside by Bishop. Got the little block but then ran hard for another first down. Scotty Montgomery in his days at Duke faced off against Virginia Tech as the offensive coordinator. For the Blue Devils. Beat him twice, actually, as an assistant for Duke. Nelson going to keep it. Went out of bounds near the 35. Adonis Alexander forcing out Nelson. Well, we asked Scotty, you know, where do the influences come from? And obviously from David Cutcliffe. He spent time with Cutcliffe in a couple of different occasions, and he, he knows Cut extremely well. Coach for Coach Tomlin, who Roddy was just talking about in, in Pittsburgh. But a guy he gives credit for was Bruce Arians, who was the offensive coordinator on that team. 
that's now the head coach, obviously, with Arizona, played quarterback here at Virginia Tech, a nice tie-in with this school. But those are the three guys he said really, and he's had a lot of other guys help him. But Cutcliffe, Tomlin, and Arians, pretty good triumvirate of guys. This is Scott breaking free. Now off to his left. Finally tackled out of bounds at the 10. Face on had to wrap him up. 25 yards, Anthony Scott. Great speed. Scott's credited with running 4 3 in his pro timing day. And you can see the quickness and ability to change direction. Creating some problems for Virginia Tech as he got into the secondary. There's a player down for Virginia Tech. And that's 94, Trevon Hill. So they will attend to Hill. And we'll take a timeout. You are watching the ACC Network, an exclusive production of Raycom Sports. Also streaming live on the ACC.com and on the official ACC mobile app. Hey, you're feeling like a champion today. Tire Pro is giving you the opportunity to be one with the road to the championship sweepstakes. Enter for a chance to win a VIP trip for two to the ACC championship game and a new set of Continental tires. Enter today at TireProSweepstakes.com. Tom, important moment here now for East Carolina. They'd like to finish this drive and get in the end zone. They've had a tough time with that this year. On first and goal, down to the five is Anthony Scott. His helmet comes off, which means he must vacate the field for a play. Had a couple of moments in this game where they have not been able to finish at the back end of the drive. Had four moments last week against South Carolina, which was most certainly have won the game for them. So these, I would see there was the game within the game for them right here is to finish this drive and put it in the end zone, get them some momentum for next week. Such a difficult loss a week ago for East Carolina. They did everything right except the game hang on to the football in that game against South Carolina, where they racked up 519 yards of total offense but lost 20 to 15. And we told you about those turnovers inside the 10 yard line in that game against South Carolina. Trying to punch it in, not on this play. Virginia Tech is not having it. Devin Anderson repelled by Ricky Walker at a loss of two. Well, important to be able to run the ball in the red zone. It keeps the front seven honest where you can get some one-on-one -on -one matchups on the outside. If you can't run it, it frees up those intermediate defenders to run and defend the pass game. So now on third down, probably most certainly a situation where Nelson will be throwing the ball. Yeah, to follow up on that point, Dave, last five trips, they have not been able to come away with points in the red zone. And that takes you back into the South Carolina game as well. Again, a loss 20 to 15 after they trailed 17 nothing in the first quarter of that contest. Nelson looking for something. Dropped at the 10. Motua Puaka. Also, Houston Gaines. Now, looking into the end zone, trying to find an open receiver. Virginia Tech zones it off, takes away the opportunities, and now Nelson floats to his left. Just no place to throw the ball. And now the guy that Bud Foster calls the eraser, Motua Pawaka, slows him down enough where he gets some help to put Nelson on the ground. 15 tackles for loss as a team for Virginia Tech today. Verity, the freshman, makes the field goal from 27 yards away. Three more points on the board for ECU, but we'll be back after a word from your local ACC station. ACC football presented by Mellow Mushroom, 54-17 Virginia Tech, our Duluth trading company. Hardest working player, Gerard Evans. Three TD passes and that 55-yard touchdown run in the second half for Evans. Yeah, I don't know what, what play you pick out that was more impressive, the long run where he made virtually everybody wearing a, a, a pirate hat miss him, or how about when he twists his ankle and throws a 45-yard strike <laughs> to, to uh, Isaiah Ford. He, he really has been on top of his game today and really has been on top of his game all season long. I think the Hokies are excited. They've got a big-time quarterback. 282 yards passing 
for Gerard Evans. Let's break it down even further. Gerard Evans, first year in a Virginia Tech uniform, and he has played so well in the early part of the season. Yeah, saw coverage extremely well. He wants to get the ball to Ford. When does he have those opportunities? Well, we saw one in double coverage on the last play. There he got single coverage. Here's the play I'm talking about where he hurt his ankle and still puts Ford up the bat with an outstanding throw. Goes over to the sideline. They tape him up, and he comes back in the game and shoots one down the pipe to Cam Phillips for a touchdown. But here's the run. This will be on the highlight film everywhere in America tonight. As Gerard Evans makes everybody miss and then gets in the end zone on the 55-yard run for a score. And he's trying to lay claim to maybe the player of the week in the ACC. Wow, 97 yards rushing for Evans and that touchdown. 10 rushing attempts in the football game. McKenzie for five yards. We check in with our Charlotte studios and Katie with them. Our Hardy's update takes us to Charlottesville and the Hoos are fighting back. Quarterback Kurt Bankert, 82 yards to Olamide Zacchaeus. We call him old, puts the Hoos up 35-28. Yeah, they're fighting back. It's been an interesting one, though, Tom. Dave? You should see my face. <laughs> <laughs> An 82-yard touchdown play puts Virginia, to, uh, Virginia rather, are we doing in it by front. Are we doing it by design in Charlotte? <laughs> when the Wahoos make a play, we have Stan do the update, and yeah. when they don't, then Coach Bowden. You know what that is? <laughs> That's great producing. <laughs> great producing, great, although great. the flag will go against Five Virginia Tech. First down. Uh, there is a shake it up East Carolina player. Well, you give uh, ECU a ton of credit, Tom. East Carolina has not quit. They have fought and scraped. Things have been tough for them today. They've been under it right from the start. But they have uh, continued to compete. Dave, that's Pat Green jogging off the field. Junior from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Don't forget next Saturday. We start at noon with the ACC Blitz. Tom Stan, or Tommy Stan, Katie, and then Virginia and Duke. That's a 12:30, 68th all-time meeting. That is a close series between those two teams. Virginia leads the all-time series 34 to 33, and they get back at it again after Virginia won the meeting a season ago against the Duke Blue Devils who have gone to four straight bowl games and they won a bowl game last year Dave for the first time since 1961 although they have come out of the gate a little slow here in 2016 a lot of personnel changes for David Cutcliffe's team be fun to watch him uh, that could all change very quickly today if they put a scare into Notre Dame which will play five ACC opponents you got to remember that Thomas Cirk their starting quarterback went down with an Achilles injury he's a Certainly a very valuable and intelligent player on that offense for David Cutcliffe. So they're making the best of what they can and have a great chance on a national stage against Notre Dame today. Virginia Tech has now got over 500 yards of total offense. Well, I'm working at a, at, at a pedestrian pace now, normally a fast paced offense. Work a little slower, obviously, work the clock here. Up the middle and a first down. Brendan Motley. Sergeant made the tackle. Next Saturday, ACC Network Game of the Week. Presented by Mellow Mushroom. Let's check the penalty first. Dead ball, late hit, offense. Number 66, 15 yard penalty. First down. See if we can locate the penalty here. Left side of the screen. It's Mitchell right there, 66, Dave. Well, that would be the definition of spearing a guy on the ground. And that's why he's standing on the sidelines right now. So he'll be watching the next play. Justin Fuente, pretty good start as the first year head coach. Here at Virginia Tech, his team's going to improve to 3 and 1 on the year. He has coached against East Carolina in the past as the head coach of Memphis in 2012 and lost that game against the Pirates. He's going to get this one today, though, as the clock continues to roll. We're about to dip inside of four minutes remaining. All right, back to what's happening next Saturday. ACC Network Game of the Week presented by Mellow Mushroom. 
We head to Durham where David Cutcliffe's Blue Devils will welcome Bronco Mendenhall and the Virginia Cavaliers trying to win a close ball game today against Central Michigan. Coverage on the ACC Network begins at noon with the ACC Blitz powered by Ram Trucks. Katie with them, Tommy Bowden, and Stan Northfleet. And their insights. Yeah, a couple of dynamic playmakers in that game. You got Taekwon Mazel, the running back, who could catch it and run it for Virginia. And of course, TJ Roming, who plays wide receiver, uh, will get inside. They'll give him the jet sweep. Two dynamic, fast players that can make plays. Looking forward to that matchup next week in the ACC. Motley, the pass, complete on the edge. Diablo. Near the 35 yard line, Simmons making the stop. Eight yards of the play for Virginia Tech. Those orange effect helmets on homecoming, producing a huge day for Virginia Tech on all sides of the football. Offense, defense, special teams, they made all the plays today. We may see those orange effect helmets again later on this season, Dave. Yeah, well, they had the homecoming, they had the orange out here, and, and uh, we talked to Coach Fuente. Roddy and I had a chance to visit Coach Fuente before the game. I said, you pick out the uniforms. He says, well, I chip in, I help out a little bit. We felt like this might be a kind of a cool uniform, with, or the helmet, with it being the orange out here at Lane Stadium today. McKenzie gets wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage. Justin Fuente, who did such amazing things at Memphis, has continued it in his first four games as the head coach of Virginia Tech. Although the Hokies will have to punt in this situation. With the game well in hand, 54 to 17, I think a lot of people thought this would be much closer based on the way the Pirates have played this season. That one is dropped at the 27, and that's Virginia Tech football. Quade Johnson off his fingertips. Chagas covers it. This has got to be one of those moments for Scotty Montgomery as the coach at ECU says, okay, you know what? We're going to get everything out in one game. We're going to get all the screw ups out today because this is just a simple catch. I'm sure obviously felt the blocker there in front of him. Sergeant maybe have deflected his focus, but just didn't catch a football. Yeah, ACU is going to drop the two and two Dave and they have a conference game coming up next Saturday at home against Central Florida a team. They beat on the road last year 44 to seven while Scotty Montgomery was still an assistant at Duke. Just having a conversation there with with Blake Johnson about the importance of trying to focus for 60 minutes. Boy, victory form. You don't rarely see victory formation with 2:30 left, 2:25 left. But Virginia Tech going to kneel down. Here's our performance of the game. It's brought to you by your local Chevy dealers, Isaiah Ford. 117 yards receiving and a touchdown. For Ford, Dave, that TD is 21st of his career. Needs just one more to tie the school record. Antonio Freeman, one of the great players to play here. Virginia Tech, obviously an outstanding Green Bay Packer as well. Here's Isaiah Ford's numbers through three games against East Carolina. 19 catches, 299 yards, and three touchdowns for Isaiah Ford against the ECU Pirates. They're hoping that he goes to the NFL early. I'm sure. I'm assuming. <laughs> Boy, he has had a career against ECU. Well, with this win today for the Hokies, that'll stop the two-game winning streak in the series for East Carolina. That'll mean that of the last seven meetings, Virginia Tech has won five, and now they're seven and three at home against East Carolina. Orange effect helmets working wonders today. The excitement got started with Greg Stroman and that return of a punt as Stroman went 87 yards, his second career punt return for a touchdown. His first one came in the Independence Bowl, the win against Tulsa at the end of last season. Well, two really good young head football coaches here. Let's not forget how young Justin Fuente is, one of the younger coaches as well as uh, 40 years old. Obviously, Scotty Montgomery, a young head football coach. You've got two coaches here that are two of the really rising stars in the coaching ranks, and they're going to have good football teams uh, at, their, at their respective programs for quite a while. Justin Fuente orchestrated such a great turnaround at Memphis went 19 and 6 in his last two years there and 38 year old Scotty Montgomery is going to have to accept the loss today but there will be better days ahead for East Carolina as I mentioned they start conference play next week for Virginia Tech Dave it's a week off 
for the Hokies. They will enjoy a bye week after this big victory. And then on October 8th, they travel to North Carolina. They lost in overtime here at Lane Stadium last year against North Carolina. And that was Frank Beamer's last home game. Huge. So a score to sell. Huge, huge moment for them in the coastal as we start to see this thing tighten up. Big one coming up in the coastal. Stay tuned because you've got you've got North Carolina taking on Pitt. So the clock now has stopped with 13 seconds left. Gerard Evans three touchdown passes and that touchdown run which you are going to see for a long time. An incredible run where he must have broken what six or seven tackles on that 55 yard run day. I think everybody had a chance at it. He teed it up said okay all yeah. left need to get a shot at me. his own players had to get out of the way I'm going to the end zone. So just the final snap by East Carolina 54 17 Justin Fuente and the Hokies improved to three and one on the season as they take out the Pirates 54 to 17 for highlights and must see moments from this game and others check out the ACC.com. Join us for the ACC Blitz, powered by Ram Trucks next Saturday at noon, followed by the Mellow Mushroom Game of the Week, Virginia 2. You've been watching coverage of Atlantic Coast Conference football on the ACC Network, an exclusive production of Raycom Sports.